be here after an exciting morning of uh, footy. It's Ollie Howard, AFL Europe Chairman, and Kieran O'Hara. Well, I'll let him introduce himself, the, the one and only. Um, just, you know, go from Ireland who's involved in footy, that's it. Sits on the AFL Europe, or has sat on the AFL Europe Commission for six years. Uh, coaching the Banshees, or look out, helping Warriors. to coach. Warriors. Oh, the Warriors. Yeah. The Warriors. Uh, and man about town, been involved in everything AFL Europe. So we're lucky to see the, uh, the, English, the England Vixens and Swedish Ravens playing against each other today. And um, the Vixens had most of the ladies playing in the IC17, the International Cup that was held in Melbourne uh, in August this year. Uh, very strong team, always put out a great, great group of girls. And um, I think uh, most, most of these girls have played both tournaments, so, so ready to go today. So this is Bryony Cleal, who uh, plays semi-pro rugby. She um, actually, that one's skewed off, but she has kicked a lot of goals. Today. I've seen some of their games earlier today, and she's actually kicked quite a few. So. She's the, the main danger for this Swedish Ravens defence. And Sammy Valgren dropped a, dropped a pretty easy mark there. Not the spot to be dropping those sort of marks. Especially with Bryony and her, uh, her rugby background. You don't want her tackling tackle anywhere near goal. Uh, and you certainly don't want to be Sibania turning around and coming in on her. She's one of the best footballers in the competition. So. Yes. Married the captain. Uh, so Vice Captain Rania and Captain Laura married uh, just right. a couple of weeks ago in the yeah. summer. It's a really nice uh, nice sort of side play to the, uh, to the connection that they have out on the field. Two of, two of the well-known... Two uh, very big international cups in the summer as well. So uh, crucial players, I'm sure we'll see a lot of them now in this first half. And how was the how was the uh, international cup? How did how did the uh, the Irish women did very well, didn't they? The Irish uh, the Banshees uh, won the competition for the yeah. second time. They played Canada in the final at the Etihad Stadium. And, uh, and then Bryony again. Bryony again. I think, strong mark. I think Very this one we can mark. be pretty sure she's going to kick straight through. That's a great goal. Yeah, so already stamping, already stamping some authority on the game is Bryony. It's the first time I've seen her playing live, and uh, you're right, Kieran. She's um, she's certainly a threat for the uh, for the Swedish. Ravens backline well, and morning, outside. I watched them play against. I think it was the Wales Denmark combined team, and she kicked quite a few goals in that game as well. So she's a real threat. Yeah. And at the opposite end of the field, then we've got Sweden's number twenty, Daphne Bergqvist, who has been kicking goals for Sport all day as well. It's her debut, her first game for the uh, for the Swedish Ravens, and here she comes again, Bryony, strong lead. That's a Great good defence there by the, uh, yeah. by the Swedes. Numbers to the contest. But it's a free end. And it's great to see this, Kieran. I think, um, you know, I've been to three, three Euro Cups now and, and the women's game is just growing, going from strength to strength. And to see, uh, I think we've got eight teams here. Seven, uh, seventh seventh day, and I mean, I, I, I recall the very first Euro Cup that we had women's teams was 2010 when it was just Ireland and Italy. Um, Great goal around the corner yeah, there. Terrific goal. So, so that's Rania there, and, and really classy sort of goal, picking, yes. up, picking up from the pack and turning. Uh, so, yeah, as I say, this has grown from literally two teams that got together just to play the initial Euro Cup to all these countries now having their own leagues, so it's, it's pretty impressive. And it is really the growth point, isn't it, across Europe? The men's, the men's game's getting stronger, but the women's game is just uh, blossoming. Yes. And, it, you know, it'd be great to see a situation where perhaps next year Denmark and Wales can enter full sides rather than a combined team and, and to see other countries taking it up as well. So this is all going England's way at the moment. The, uh, the Vixens have got a, a very, very strong, uh, strong first, what is it, five minutes or so? Yeah, and, and obviously very well structured as well. You can see that they're trying to lock the ball into the Swedish back line, so...
Number four. Who's number four for the Swedes there? Stina Nylinda. She's been, uh, she's had her work cut out for her, but been good. And great mark there. A strong mark. Here come the Swedes for the first time forward of centre. But as you and say, again, that structure. That, that structure there where there's, a, there's an English player just sitting at the back of the pack. That's probably the experience that's gained by uh, going out to Australia for IC, playing every year in these sort of competitions. And, 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 and just generally the performances they've had in the Euro Cup in the last couple of years. You know, they've been winners, they've, yep. uh, they've been in the finals. So again, going to Bryony. So the ball's over the back here, and that's oh. a nice little toe poke. That's, that's a goal. goal. That's a go I think that's one of the Salter sisters there. If I can see from this distance. So there's two sisters in the team, uh, Danny Salter and Alex Salter. And um, Danny is the vice captain. And that was number 11, so that was Danny that kicked that That was Danny one, so. there. Represented the world team at IC17 and is known as the speedster of this team. As quick as anything. And she showed her speed there to get her foot to the ball and uh, ahead of the pack. Laura, Laura Turner putting that one in. Good tackle. Strong tackle yeah, there, and that's yeah, Danny again. Danny again. But she's given away a free kick. We've got the Scottish sirens beside us. <laughs> You're wondering what the ambient noise is. <laughs> yeah. So the traffic's all one way at the moment. And again, there's Laura. Laura Turner just sitting back, doing the right thing. And Laura's been around, hasn't she, Kieran? She's sort of she's one of the pioneers really yeah. of English football. So, and kicking to her wife there. Yes, that's great. Yeah, Laura's. Perhaps I mean, we'll be able to hear that in Australia in the future. Let's hope so. Um, I think uh, it can't be. Oh, that's a great goal, great kick. It can't be underestimated what people like Laura do for the growth of the game. Uh, you know, in their region and across Europe and internationally, really. It's, um, you know, the volunteers like that who give their time, their energy, uh, financial commitment coming to these tournaments. It's, it's just amazing. Yeah. And I mean, again, on this English team, there's quite a few. If you look at, you've got someone like Lisa Wilson as well who's involved and she's running the Clapham Cup. So she's actually running an underage program in London. So. And Lisa's now involved at AFL Europe too as uh, the women's coordinator. So Lisa's heavily involved in growing the women's game and the junior game right across Europe. Exactly. Um, and <laughs> and she's now a an international superstar after her uh, her appearance on AFL 360 during the International Cup. Oh, I missed that one. It was good. It was her, it was her life ambition achieved? And uh, if reports are true, Nick Del Santo called out three weeks later that his favourite moment of the IC was meeting the bubbly English girl in the green room who didn't who knew everything about footy. Well, Nick Del Santo's always been a bit of a charmer, so... Yes. Perhaps not. Uh, um, so ball's out on the, uh, the sort of English flank here. Um, eight. So it's Teresa Kreese who's got the ball, and it's her, uh, her Ravens debut too. So I think there's quite a few of the Ravens girls that are uh, debuting today, which is good for the future of football in Sweden. Yeah, and I mean, they, they, gave, uh, they gave the Banshees quite a game, and the scoreboard probably didn't reflect just how competitive that game was, but I watched their game against Croatia before that, and some of their play was outstanding. What, what was the scoreboard in that game, mate? Not actually certain, but you know. It wasn't it, the Banshees' first game, was it? It was the Banshees' second okay. game. No, I yeah. thought you meant the first one, which was uh, fairly lopsided. I, I, uh, actually, we had a game on for the men on another pitch at that time, so we hadn't heard exactly what that score was. <laughs> so. I think um, just to give a bit of insight into the sort of background to the tournament and uh, the preparation. Here we Rania go, Rani again. Oh, oh, she's done the right thing. She's got it and through Bryony for Bryony. Chasing it. Take, that, take the, the handball over the top. Oh, That's good, good, good defense. defense. Team defense there. Numbers back. Protecting and saving a goal there. 
Um, so the preparation. So, so the English, uh, the Vixens team had training sessions across Nottingham. Uh, there was practice matches in uh, in Wandsworth with the Wandsworth Demons. Uh, so one of London League's uh, stronger teams. Um, and, and, and a club that contribute immensely to AFL Europe. I mean, it's 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 been funny the number of ground managers and there's, volunteers and boundary umpires and umpires that we've met here today that have all come from the ones with Demons. There's twelve. Club. There's twelve across. Twelve volunteers across from the Wandsworth Demons, which is an incredible commitment. Um, most of them sort of a lot of Aussies um, just keen to be involved and see the growth of a game that they love and um, yeah you know from I think if we had a commu an AFL Europe Community Spirit Award I think the Demons would probably get it this year it would be very high yeah. and a big thank you to them really Bryony again I, I don't imagine she's going to miss this one so Bryony Bryony I said earlier she's um a semi-pro rugby player, and she's um, playing with the Saracens. Playing with the Saracens, yeah. so you know, obviously a very strong sporting uh, pedigree, and you know, translating that to AFL um, and doing it with with a plum. She's uh, she's been very very good in this first half. She must have kicked what three goals? Uh, I I think she may have kicked five possibly. Do you think she kicked them all? Well, no, we know that. Danny Salter got one, so... Yes. Let's put it down as four. Uh, we'll go, we'll no, let's, let's say four, because Danny Salter and Randy Turner oh, no, no. Don't got one, so Randy let's, Randy. let's say... Three, where I started. Yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let's go with your version. <laughs> <laughs> Half time then, 33 <laughs> points to nil to the uh, England Vixens. <laughs> And so I think half time's a very good time. Uh, we've got a um, a friend here from from the Peace team, or the Jerusalem Lions, I should say now. Uh, Nimrod's joining us, and so Nimrod was was here with me last year, and happy to see him again this year. So I'm welcome. Very happy to be here. A little bit disappointed about our last result, but very happy to be here. Yeah. So for for the people who've just. I think 15 or 16 to 8. Had two nice goals. We were in the forward half of the game most of the time. And the second half, we lost momentum. Uh, I feel partially responsible. I gave away a free kick. They kicked the goal and they were very close. So, But uh, I mean, it was a really good team effort. And uh, to be more and more competitive every year since 2008, yeah. uh, it's phenomenal. Um, I well, think this is our best year. I think, I mean, I've watched uh, three Euro Cups now, and, and as you say, more and more competitive is an understatement. You know, you, you've won games today. You were, you were running uh, Scotland ragged in the first little bit then. Um, I think it's an it's a, you know, absolute honour to you guys, and you should be very proud of what you've been able to achieve. Um, on that, I think it'd be interesting just to ask you and to, for everyone to hear what's, what, the, what the sort of Jerusalem Lions... You know what's their story and how how difficult is it to um, get a team together and then get a team here? So yeah, the Jerusalem Peace Lions are a fifth incarnation of I think one of the best initiatives that are going on for peace in Israel over the last few years. In 2008, a woman by the name of Tanya Oziel uh, put together through sheer effort with her own bare hands a team comprised of half Palestinians and half Israelis and sent them to the Australian World Cup, to the IC 2008. Um, it was kind of put together after a few months. And then in 2011, it was very seriously done. I was a part of that. Um, seven months of preparations. Uh, Robert Dippier Domenico was coaching us. Uh, there's we a beautiful documentary about that, isn't there? Yeah, there's a great documentary called Tackling Peace about the first team. Uh, we had huge challenges bringing the Palestinians into Israel for practice. And we came back in 2011 and we had three, uh, three um, I would say, wars or operations since in the Gaza Strip. Uh, and there were problems between the, uh, the NGOs that were supporting us. And the teams just disbanded, um, which for me was just... I mean, it was horrible uh, uh, because it was such a great message that we were uh, giving. And then the players, just remnants of the players, Avi Ben Benishti and Saeed Balhum from the 2011 team, they just decided, no, nah, we're going to do it. 
and uh, they contacted the Jerusalem uh, municipality. Uh, they supported it. Um, so the that's, team. that's one player, one player from the sort of Jewish Israeli side, and one from the Arab Palestinian that's side right. of the team. That's together. right. They put it together for, for three years ago. For the, I think it was in Croatia. Um, obviously, less funding is needed to get to Europe. Um, that was great. Last year was incredible in Lisbon. We won our first game in the, in the EU Championship. And this year, um, again, they managed to put it together. This year was even tougher. We were short on money. Um, and this thing is not getting enough attention in Israel. We want to come back with a really big message in Israel. That's why this interview is important. There's a lot of people watching us back there. Um, and I, I just want one story. We have on this team, it's very difficult to get Palestinians in, right? So we mainly have East Jerusalem Arabs and Jews on this team at the moment. It, Jerusalem is hot enough as it is in, over the last two years, so it's a big mm -hmm. deal for us to play together. We also have one uh, Palestinian called Nano from uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is the center of uh, the conflict at the moment. Um, is actually injured by, uh, he had a little scuffle with some, uh, with some soldiers there because it is very tense there at the moment. I'm not saying who's right or wrong, but it's very tense and for him to show up is just a huge deal and uh, play in the ruck. So we're so, very happy. So what sort of, I mean, what's involved there? To, I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure there's borders between Ramallah and, you know, into, into Israel. Yeah. Um, what's involved just to get to training? Uh, there's, sorry. That was a goal. Great goal there by uh, Laura, uh, by Rania. So, yeah, getting distracted having a chat We're about happy we didn't business. play the Vixens. Yeah, they, they're a very impressive team, aren't they? And we'll, we'll, we'll get back to, I want to ask these questions about the Peace team um, in a second, but Rania just seems to be running straight through the middle here and uh, really, really driving the, uh, the English Vixens forward. Very, very impressive, uh, impressive play there. Yeah, the scoreboard seems to have uh, stopped here. Well, it's only fair. <laughs> Keeping everyone uh, a bit more interested. Um, so as we watch the ball go down into the, uh, into the English forward line again, that's a good kick around the corner. And strong defence from the Swedes. It's good to see there's some great bits of play here by the Swedish girls too. The Swedish Ravens are trying very hard, but just seem to be overwhelmed by the... Uh, Oh, and what a strong, that's, that's courageous there. That's Laura again. Again, held by the Swedish, Swedish defence. The English, I, I think Kieran mentioned it earlier, but the English structures here seem way too strong. They just have uh, a sort of rolling, rolling zone that's uh, picking off the, uh, the Swedish quick kicks out of defence because there's so much pressure. Well, they're very skilled, right? Every kick finds its mark and uh, they're very quick. I remember the, they, won the, they, were they were close to winning it last year, right? Just lost by a that's goal, right. I think. Yep, that's, that's exactly right. They were, they were right in it against the uh, Banshees last year. We, we actually have a video going around in our group WhatsApp from the Banshees against the Vixens last year. Of two players. And Rania again. Yeah, Very one. strong. Sorry, of two players, yeah. We, we, have a play, we have a video going around our WhatsApp group. It's our inspirational video from the women's final last year where there's a Vixen and a Banshee going for a mark and they both just collide head on just trying to get the I ball. remember that. And we thought, wow, we would never do that. And then they just get up and continue to play. And you could hear that throughout the entire ground. You could hear the collision. And that's footy, right? Yeah. And, and that's, it's, I mean, it's the beauty, you know, people. People look at women's football now, and it's it's just as tough. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not tougher. <laughs> it's not tougher exactly. As number five comes running straight through there, um, and so here's here's Briny again, and that's it. That's really oh, beautiful turn. She's uh, it's very impressive, Briny. Um, so so Nimrod, just just a quick one as um as we follow the play here, but. What's involved in bringing a team to a Euro Cup? So how much does it cost? How difficult is it to get a team here? Well, you can get a team with, I would say, 20, 25,000 bucks, but you wouldn't have much practice. And you would mainly have people who are inside the borders of Israel practicing. Um, if, we had, if we had 100, $120,000, we could get people through the borders. They would have to obviously make it. They would have to go through checkups. There's an. And that was Louise Darby. That was a beautiful, beautiful bit of play. Keep going. Uh, so we would have them waiting at the at the checkpoints. So they need to show some motivation. I think they will be able to because we've got players to go back and to tell them about what a great experience this is. 
um, and we need to pay to get them in. They need work permits to get in. Uh, they can't just get in for the sake, for the fun of it. Um, and we need to practice properly throughout the entire year. We can't just teach people the game three months ahead of the tournament because then we're just outskilled by everyone. Yep. Um, and there's no cohesion between the uh, between the team. Yeah. And I mean that's that's really what you know. Winning and losing at the end of the day doesn't matter for the for the peace team as much as that cohesion and, and taking a message back to the country. I mean, you want to win, and you you know you will win more and more games. But I think the message you're you're promoting is uh, is really the most special part of it. Yeah, I mean, look, we I, we had plays today where people shepherded for each other. Um, people went went to protect each other. We had the, the Austrians got a little bit hot headed with us, so we had a little brawl over there. <laughs> Two players got ejected. But, you know, we both came to protect each other in this game, which is something you wouldn't normally see uh, back home. So, I'm happy about it. Well, when you're, when you're, you know, shepherding for a mate on your team, you're not really looking what, you know, what colour skin, what exactly. background, what religion, anything. It's just your, uh, you're looking at the jumper, aren't you? Yeah, the and it's of... footy instinct. Yeah. And so, how about, how about, I mean, I know it's hard enough with a, and Briny there, it's, I think just kicked another goal. No, just missed that. Um, footy, it's hard enough to get a men's team, but is there aspirations to uh, build a women's team in, in your area in the world and you know, challenge, these, challenge these, these girls at some stage? You know, I think it's possible. Um, I think it's possible. If we get a, the right budget, we need, to get, we need to aim to get a women's team and a men's team. We've got, the good thing about Israel is we've got a lot of Aussie expats there, yep. and the embassy is very involved. We have a once or twice a year an embassy hosted game. Oh, that's in the back there, I think. No. Nope. That's all right. Got to tell you, when I did that against Scotland, they gave away a free kick. <laughs> I'm disappointed. <laughs> uh, we can always find, uh, always find the anomalies there. No, the umpiring has been good. I think it's been... I mean, we've got to understand, just like, just like the players are, um, you know... Uh, amateur players here, the umpires are too, and they're learning, and the umpires have actually come from all over the world, so I'm, I met one of, uh, in fact, I think that's her out there. Um, we've got an umpire from England and an umpire from the US. Laurie from America. Laurie. 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 That's it. It is. Yeah. And so Laurie, Laurie is uh, from the States, umpires over there, umpired at the um, International Cup, and has flown over here to umpire here, which is, you know, probably the most international umpire you can possibly find. I mean, footy is the best sport in the world, and it's uh, hopefully not going to stay such a well-kept secret for a while. It needs to be viewed by as many people as possible. It's fast, it's exciting, and uh, it needs to be all over the place, really. I agree. I agree. But uh, the, Swedes are, the Swedes are pushing forward here, so let's just stick with me for another two or three minutes, Nimrod, and uh, let's, uh, let's call the game and hope that the uh, Swedes can get, get a score on the score. Yeah. They certainly deserve it. They've, uh, they've been more competitive than the scoreboard suggests at this point. I agree. Oh, that's strong. That's really strong. And number two for Sweden here. Uh, oh. What a contest. I don't know if that was prior, but we're good. <laughs> So this is number two. This is um, this is Ida Rams Rasmark, and she was the two thousand in two thousand sixteen team of the tournament. So she's got some sort of form, but a strong, really strong uh, defensive mark there for the English Vixens. I'm looking out for uh, number five for the Vixens, Sophie Morris, who supposedly loves the after party. I've asked the girls to give a few facts about themselves, and uh, if, we may not have spotted her on the field yet, but uh, it sounds like she'll be doing her best work after the games today. Maybe there's pre-drinks. How is the after party going to be like? Uh, so this year we've, um, we've set a marquee up at the grounds. There's four grounds here, so on, on camera we can see um, ground two only, but there, there are four grounds in the middle of Bordeaux here. Um, beautiful setup, actually, and um, instead of uh, leaving leaving here, we're going to stay around and uh, uh, have a French three-course dinner and and a couple of drinks uh, after the um, after the games. Lovely. We got music playing. There is. There'll be a DJ. Oh, you got some dance moves, Nimrod? Do you? Uh, if it's Latin, yes. 
happily. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Oh, there's, yeah. Rolls in. And there's a player so, down. Yeah, no, she's getting up. Maybe she's a bit sore after kicking too many goals, Bryony. You know something? I think my team has disappeared. So I'm going to go and uh, look yeah, for no, you if please. you don't mind, because we might have another game very soon. Absolutely, mate. Thank you very much. And, um, you know, good luck with, uh, with getting to next year's tournaments. And, um, you know, keep doing what you guys are doing. I, I, you know, on behalf of AFL Europe, and personally, I've got all the time in the world for uh, what you're doing. And I think it's an amazing, amazing thing. Thanks so much for having us. Uh, and you guys have been organizing it incredibly well once again. So I'm definitely in next year. And uh, uh, Good keep, one. Keep, keep going at it and make footy a worldwide uh, phenomenon. Thank you. And there we go. Thank you. There we go. So great game there by the... Uh it's going to be really nervous. And they um, 48-0. So it's a, it's a comprehensive victory, really. And I think now we're going to see the, uh, the English men play. I'm just going to find out who's on, uh, on Oval 2 next. So, Ollie, it looks like it's uh, the England men, men's team as they uh, make a little corridor for the winning women to pass through. But from memory, it's the English, the English team up against the, uh, up against the French Cox. So oh, it's, a, it's the old the, England v France the, derby. The frogs versus the roast beef. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, it's a long-standing rivalry. Uh, not often does it happen on the AFL field, that's for sure. But uh, look, what, that was great listening to Nimrod. Um, I, I was lucky enough to interview Nimrod earlier. But, you know, for all those people who are watching the uh, Bar TV coverage, you know, this is truly becoming a world game. It's not, just, it's not just Europe. It's not just North America. It is around the world. We saw a lot of the Pacific nations do quite well during the, uh, during the International Cup, as well as those North American teams. And uh, look, if it wasn't for budget problems, I think we'd probably have every single European team out there. But um, I know that where I am living in Sweden, it was a bit tough for the Swedes to, to get the money. Um, and I think that's the same, the same problem that Nimrod's talking about. It's, it's just how can we get some of these sponsors, how can we get some of these, these corporations to back us and uh, back the sport? And uh, you know, hopefully if we keep shouting out from the rooftops, um, you know, AFL Australia will certainly look at, uh, you know, expanding the game as much as possible. Yeah, and that's, and that's exactly right. Um, you know, the, the commitment and the sacrifice made by every player to come here is huge. Um, not only financial, you know, there's, there's the training sessions and um, uh, travelling for hours from, from different places across Europe and then also taking days off work to get here to play a sport that their boss has never heard of. It's, it's quite amazing, really. Um, lucky enough for this game. So, so it's the England Dragon Slayers and the French Cox. So I'm lucky enough to be joined by Andrew Hughes from the AFL. So, Andrew, I'll, I'll let you, uh, Hughes, I'll let you uh, explain your role at the AFL, but we're very, very happy to have you out here for the tournament. And you would have seen these guys all playing in the, uh, the International Cup in Melbourne recently. And Thomas.
This is uh, Thomas in the Ruck, who, who's a very, very strong player for the French. He's been, uh, he's been a mainstay of their team for many years, along with a couple of other guys, Julien Gill in the back line, who's about as wide as he is, tall, and I've, I've been tackled by him before, and I can tell you it's not fun. Uh, Hervé running around. They're, they've got a very strong team, the Cox, but um, I think the Brits... The, the English team really uh, benefit from the, from a strong league back or leagues in in England. Um, they get to play with a lot of Australians on a weekly basis, and and the game is really becoming much stronger uh, throughout England. So it's going to be a good game today. I'm looking forward to this. Bit of soccer skills there from uh, Lukey Booth. I think that was uh, Mick K there, number six. And so here's Julian Gill, and, and I think. Um, one of the better kicks of the ball for a, for internationally really uh, gets some distance. I say that, and he kicks it straight on the chest of uh, one of the dragon slayers. And this uh, this looks to be Matthew Wiley, uh, Whiteley. Sorry, Matthew Whiteley. Some interesting uh, stuff hughesy has got about Matthew Whiteley, but uh, we'll talk about that one later. No, that seems to be holding the man there. So 26, 26 for the uh, for the Cox, uh, Fabian. Yeah, Flock. More of a German name than a French name. Maybe up up near the Alsatian border. <laughs> All right, beautiful goal. Beautiful goal. Andrew Andrew Walkton, who likes to call himself Fantasia after the uh, the bomber great. Andrew Walkton, with skills like that, it looks like he could be. Uh, I'm too quick there. That's um, that's Maxim Favero running away. He should have kicked that. Really should have kicked that. Uh, there's not going to be too many easy chances for the French today, and they've got to make the most of all any any shot on goal they get. It's a big boy for big boy for the uh, Dragon Slayers. A nice kick out of the fence, but Thomas, right, that's man. a that's a strong mark. So I say Thomas has been around the traps uh, for a long time, and uh, very very good player. Man, that's a great, great mark kick. inside 50. Great kick. So this is Pierre, and uh, Pierre's a strong forward. Pierre, Pierre is that classic, you know, lead up marking forward. Just showed his skills there, and he's now got to do the do the business and get this through. Chance to level it up. That's a great kick. Well done, well done. That's uh, I mean, it goes back to Thomas in the middle, intercept mark, and then a beautiful pass into the forward fifty. And so, Hughes, you tell us tell us a little bit about uh, about the AFL's sort of international, you know, remit and uh, and strategy. Yeah, so a responsibility really to to try to share this great game with the the rest of the world. And um, there's so many passionate people uh, all over the world, particularly in Europe. And um, really, our our job out of the AFL um, is to try to support all the passionate people all over the world to grow the game, whether that be in trying to help people play um, or watch the game and just try to increase that awareness and consumption of the game. That's a, <laughs> quite a large role there. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Large responsibility, I should say. And do, you, do, you, do you know how many people are playing around the world? Yeah, so last year there was um, over 130,000 participants uh, worldwide. Um, and yeah, probably the largest participation base is uh, sort of in Papua New Guinea where they have 
had up to 40,000 participants last year. I think that number will grow to something like 60,000 this year. Oh, oh, here great we play. Go. That's oh, a great goal. goal there. That's beautiful. Great goal, and they've kicked a couple yeah. in a row here, the French, to uh, really take some uh, have, momentum. Have a bit of a run on, don't they? Yeah, so, yeah, 130,000. I expect that number um, could grow, you know, in excess of 160,000. Um, and, yeah, the really significant participation bases are sort of out of um, Papua New Guinea and the South Pacific and <coughs> through uh, South Africa where there's, you know, over 30,000 participants as well. And we've got uh, about 8,500 at the moment playing across Europe. Yeah, um, and I guess the, the, the real strength of Europe is that it's... Um, all, all adult competitions so um, and what you see here today and probably the great thing about the Euro Cup is uh, you, you really are seeing the local um, players perform. Uh, beautiful goal. It's a great goal there. This is yeah. a, a great back and forth Seesawing battle isn't it? Let's, uh, let's hope this uh, keeps going. That was, uh, that was number two. That was Alex Overton there who, who is known for kicking a mongrel but it doesn't matter when it goes straight through the big sticks. Supposedly, and you know, I can't see it from here, but he's known also for having quite a big schnoz. They say you can uh, you can see his nose before he arrives. <laughs> Good old Alex Overton. But anyway, if he keeps kicking them like that, then he's uh, he's doing very well. And here he is again. Let's see if he kicks this one spinning right. No, there he goes. That spinning beautifully. That beautiful. Great spot. Yeah. And he turned him inside out there. Number 11. Walked uh, yeah, walked him. Bang. That's a great goal. He That's looks He one. looks like a player of the uh, world I'm team. Pretty sure, pretty sure he might have won the goal kicking uh, out of uh, IC as well. So clearly highly credentialed and uh, started beautifully here. Uh, knows how to find them. Yeah, so I guess, you know, as you, as you were saying, it's, it's mainly adult competition here. There's, there's also the talent sort of side to it, the Irish, mainly Irish connection there. Yep. We've got, uh, I think it's 13 Irish players on uh, AFL and AFLW lists at the moment. Yeah, and that's significant. And, um, yeah, the, the connection with the, the women's footy, uh, I heard you talking about that a little bit earlier. Um, it's really great to see so many women's teams here uh, and... You know, there might be opportunities there for, for girls to uh, strive to make the AFLW competition one day. Oh, that's a strong tackle, and that's that's Julian Gill in the trenches there. And uh, we'll come here. So this looks poised for a really uh, really big second half. This game, great tackle. I think, uh, it's a beautiful day here in Bordeaux. There's absolutely no wind, so no no sort of goal kicking end. It's, it's, it's an even day. And Fantasia. He's, he's been very good, very impressive in the first half. I think he's been he the looks, difference he so looks, far. He looks pretty confident too. Yeah, tough kick. Plenty of rotations taking place in front of us. It's been a long day out here. Quite warm too. I think... Uh, a big kick, just but uh, just missed. Yeah, quite quite warm today, so I think a few of the guys will be getting tired, and we've seen uh, a bit of a drop off in the second of half of some of the games. So I think as we get further into the day, the team that can run out games better is really going to, you know, give this a good shake to to become the Euro Cup 2017 champions. That's where the the, the management from the coaching team is really important to make sure the players stay fresh and uh, keep those rotations coming. Running out of the fence here. Oh, big hit. That's good. Oh, great attack there. Really quite Got courageous. These, these guys have played three games already and throwing their bodies in. That's, uh, that's, that's Miles Hudson who cleared the ball there before. And um, if, uh, if he's found wandering past, uh, past half, he's, he's looking for his missus. <laughs> Just stuck down back usually, is he? The consummate, the consummate defender. So we can see the uh, 
the Swedish uh, the Swedish women's team getting ready for their next game. There's four games going on at once here, and Husey and I are lucky enough to be on the uh, pitch number two to, to watch, but there's great matches going on all around. And we're really getting to the business end now. You can see uh, the, the skills the teams here on uh, this main oval as, the, uh, as they're striving to make the, the grand final. It's been, a, it's been a really strong first half this though. Um, early on it looked like the French were getting on top and uh, the English have really settled and, uh, and taken back the ascendancy. So the French kick out wide and long here. And the mark's taken by Booth who plays on immediately oh, he's done. and slotted it. What a That's great really goal. Good. And it's taking those sort of chances that's going to be the difference here. And I think England have been, uh, the Dragon Slayers have been a bit better at that in this first half. And now kicked away to a 14 point lead. It's 27 to 13. Um, French, the French coaching, uh, coaching team is quite interesting, Husey. So Andrew Unsworth uh, is an Aussie living in Paris. And um, he's been a big part of growing the game. Uh, he works with the. Uh, the Paris Cox and then the French Cox. Um, Had the pleasure of meeting him in uh, in Melbourne for for IC. He was uh, yeah. Got he, he's got his face around the TV in the uh, in Melbourne, didn't he? He did. <laughs> got a face for it. And then Steve uh, Steve Trollope, who's a Richmond diehard, it was make it uh, wouldn't make it this week after celebrating too hard. Still, from, still uh, celebrating, was he? Yeah, from the performance last weekend. Maybe he's hoping the uh, the French can replicate the. Replicate the performance of the Tigers last weekend in the in the grand final, but um, they've got the work cut out for them. They're 14 points down at the at the main break, and uh, we'll have to see how they can come out. They'll probably need one in the first uh, few minutes of this second half to uh, to make it a contest. I think it's it's that old one. And first goal is pretty important here. Yeah. Impressive standard though, really. When you when you watch it like this, I mean, you know the. This is, it, it's just going from strength to strength and it's, it's great to see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're lucky here that we're, we're watching the, um, the top four teams, or two of the top four teams, but having been around throughout the day, you can see that the, the, the players from, from all the teams right through, um, you know, there's some great skills on display and it's been, uh, it's been great to watch. I think, Yuzi, the other, the other uh, benefit and reason for, for skills in, in the Euro Cup format is it's a nine-a-side. Yep. And uh, rather than the sort of International Cup or um, Champions League tournaments that we put on, uh, you know, where you're 18 aside and depth is tested, this really gets the cream of the crop from, uh, from the countries. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And also gives an opportunity to some countries where football's developing to bring a team so you know we've, we've been lucky enough to have the Czech Republic playing Switzerland playing Austria Russia um, yeah you know, teams a, from all across Europe and, really. and, and for a lot of people um, back in Australia they probably wouldn't have a great understanding um, or awareness the fact that all these countries do play footy and this isn't just Australian expats um, living in these places are playing these are all um, all locals in those countries, so it's amazing to see so many, so many countries. So here. While, while we're just waiting for the bounce, actually, that's an interesting point. You're able to explain the eligibility criteria for these uh, these tournaments. Yeah, so I believe it's the same as, as international uh, international cup, which um, is so between the ages of it's about where you live between the ages of 10 and 16 years of age. And so what it's really about is finding players who are from those countries to play. So. They need to be a citizen of that country and have spent the majority of their years between the ages of 10 and 16 in, in that home country. So um, all these play players that we're seeing here today are, are genuinely from those, those countries. And some people might wonder why we, we talk about the ages of 10 to 16 years. Um, but what we say, what we think is that they're the sort of impo important formative years when you learn to play footy. So if you've spent... Uh, the majority of those years in Australia, for example, um, you would have been exposed to footy and had a significant advantage over someone who has uh, lived in France their whole life. So, um, yeah, that's the, that's the eligibility. So it makes it, it makes it even more impressive to see these guys. And that's a great shepherd there by number 21. Who's that? That's, that's Louis Ozane. And he's really, uh, he's set this up. 
But even even having the, the mindset to shepherd there for someone who hasn't played the game, that's uh, you know that's what's quite impressive, really. To, to and that goes down to the coaching team to teach teach that on the training track. But absolutely, and this one uh, this one will hurt the French if they can put this one through the Dragon Slayers. But uh, he's just he's offline just there, one. keeps them keeps them in the game. Um, they'll need to take every opportunity now, the French. And Ozane really lived up to the uh, the chant the English boys uh, sing for him. He's big, he's round, he bounces off the ground. Ozane. <laughs> That's it. Long kick there by Ashley Swift, who's about as elusive as his hairline, but uh, just didn't kick that one too straight. And uh, we're lucky to... Uh, to see Lisa Wilson here, who leads the women's, the English women's team, and uh, in fact is a big part of the growth of the women's game throughout Europe and the world, and junior development. So Lisa. Interestingly, uh, the Central and Northeast uh, England League tends to have more of the England players. I think that's because they play a lot of nines, whereas down in London there's a lot of 18s. And the, the percentage of the English versus Australian in, in the C&E League is a lot higher than that in, uh, in London. Great tackle. That's, that's a rugby background there, certainly for uh, number three for the French. Julien Dagois. And uh, he's, he's won a free kick out of that. And you can just see the, the aiming for the hips there, picking up and driving. Sorry, Lisa, keep, keep going there. No, no, I'm enjoying to hear your hips and driving commentary there. We've got another pick up by Miles Hudson. Look at that kick all the way to the halfway line. Oh, and that's a fantastic Big ball. boy Ozane. Lewis Ozane. He's big, he's round, he bounces off the ground. Good intercept there by the number three again. Dagos, was it? Yeah. Yes. It, the French seem. Dagois. The French seem to be running a bit better, but they can't get past. I, I think the uh, the English are setting up quite a strong wall here across. Well, it's a small ground, but across the centre, across half half back, and uh, they're repelling repelling the French attacks very well. We pushed off so, the ball there. The French were. He's having a tough time. He's managed to get it out. A bit of a sling off the ball then. And so, Lisa, who should we keep an eye on in the last sort of 10 minutes of this game? Who's going to run it out for the, uh, for the English Dragon Slayers? Well, we've always got Luke Booth, who enjoys a good game, and he's actually moving to Australia on Monday. So this will be his last game for a while for either England or Great Britain. Um, right. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing for the country. And, uh, yeah, so where's, where's Boothy moving to? Uh, Melbourne, I believe. Uh, I think he's planning on going to Melbourne and then going on the Outback somewhere to do his his work so that he can cause some hidden Woofing. mayhem. Yes. Woofing in he the will outback. be causing mayhem in Melbourne, no doubt about it. Has he got a team yet? I don't know. It's a good question. So here come, uh, come the French again, but it looks like it's going to be... No. Always got it the French there. have got to use their speed a bit here, Lise. I think uh, they're a bit smaller than the English team. Is that online? And there's a goal. There's a fantastic goal there. That's it. And he's running straight off the field. That was a great goal. That was Simon Modin. And Simon's been uh, been playing the game for a long time in the, in the French Cox. How much French do you know, Oli? I know quite a bit, actually. Do you? Yeah. I used, to, I used to live in Paris, so I picked up a bit across the, uh, across the years. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I think the French, the French are only down by 10 points here, but um, need, to, need to kick the next goal. And I think that running the ball is going to be the way they do that. I think 
clock is wearing down though. So the ball's with the uh, French on the half, uh, half forward line. A beautiful kick, actually. He's hit up, hit up in the uh, in the pocket. It's going to be a hard shot there. It's uh, on a on a on a square uh, square field. It makes it very difficult when you get deep in a pocket. Um, so this is number seven for the French. Uh, not quite sure, not quite sure his name, but uh, let's hope he he sets it up at the at the hot spot. Don't know if that was a centre or a shot on goal there, but uh, we'll give him the benefit of a doubt. Why should uh, French cats stay away from the water? Don't know. Because un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq. Lisa's bringing her A-grade material uh, early here. Got plenty of Have you got more? Jokes. That's related to France, but... Yeah, go for one. Um, oh, one. I've got a good one. Watch call a French man in sandals. Don't know. Philippe Flop. Not bad. There's a giggle there, Ollie. There's a giggle. Have you got ones for other countries too, Lisa? Uh, mainly Spanish and Mexican, and there isn't any Spanish. All right, well, let's, uh, we'll, we'll let them go. I'll learn some German ones for next time, though. Yes, yeah, so Lisa, you're moving to Germany, and uh, plans to set up a women's team. Where are you moving to? Hamburg. Hamburg. Exactly? So Hamburg. Hamburg Dockers currently have a men's team. Yep. And there's interest in Frankfurt and Berlin so far, and in Hamburg, of course. So we'll be setting up a league. Oh, 100%. Team. If you're going to go, you're going to go do it properly. Well, you need someone to play against. <laughs> yeah. It's the so. issue we've got with my kids' club at the moment. Yep. No, but the, um, the German men's league is very strong at the moment, so it's a good opportunity there to, to build on that with the women. Any particular favourites in the German men's league? Teams or players? Teams. And we've just had another goal by Luke Booth, the yeah, aforementioned Luke Booth. So it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt the English when he moves out to Australia. He's a very strong player. He and is. That He's very nimble for a rotund kind of guy as well. With rotund. Fat. Yes. Is that a nice way of saying fat? <laughs> Pleasantly plump, we would like to say in England. So, so what do you think is going to happen in the next couple of minutes? Have they got uh, it in the bag? No, I think uh, I think that was a very important goal for the for the English team here, and they seem to have they seem to have the ascendancy. Every time the French have come at them, the English have just, uh, they've got the next goal and they just seem to be holding them at that, that comfortable distance for mine. The English haven't been great over the last couple of years, so the men will be glad. The last time they got to the final was uh, 2015 in Croatia and uh, they lost out to the Danes then, so. It'll be a hard final. The other side of the draw, I've, I've seen the Irish have, uh, have won their semi-final. Um, no, their quarter-final, sorry. Who, who else is... Uh... So... England and Ireland will be in the women's it's final. In the women's and in the men's. It's Germany and Ireland currently over on the far field who are playing That's in right. the other semi final. So it may be in England, Ireland, England, Ireland. Set of finals. Again. And who's this number 17, Lisa? He looks like a tall boy. C. Vardy. Can you, tell me, can you tell me anything about Steve Vardy? So he or is... Or is it Cy or is it Cy? Cy, Simon. Cy? So he's Cy? a strength and conditioning coach. So he uh, works at the University of Sheffield. So you'll notice that he can jump extremely high, and that is down to the excellent training programs that he puts together to improve his strength and conditioning. And he's also a finger DJ. Thanks for that, boys. Next time you could be a little bit nicer with the, what you call your friends. Um, and there's the, uh, the mongrel kicker. Number two, Alex Overton. Boys, boys. He still hasn't got one spinning properly. I should say we've asked uh, we've asked the teams to put some um, we've, we've asked the teams to put some comments down about uh, about their players so we can know a little bit more. And uh, some of the comments <laughs> probably uh, need a filter before being read. Yeah. yeah, it's a shame that the French didn't quite get on board with that. No, uh, and 23, Martin Kearney. He's so new to the team. Yeah, he's, he's a new boy. What's, what's his background? He plays for the Nottingham Scorpions. Yep. He's a fan favourite there, I believe. Very nice guy. Um, loves Johnny Barnes. <laughs> yeah, loves Johnny Barnes, yep. Um, he's uh, one, of the, one of the veterans of the team, though, I do believe. He's been around, has he? Mm. So it looks like, I mean, it's all one-way traffic at this stage. 22 points to, to the Dragon Slayers, and you'd think that they're pretty safe at, by now. You think French so? would have to do something special. Uh, Setting themselves well, up well for the final, though. It's been a strong performance. Yeah. 
And it is a, uh, it's a marathon these sort of days. It, uh, it depends on how everyone's feeling by the end of the day. You've, how many games have you played, Lise? So we're now, we've now had four, so we will have five games in total. The stop-start nature really gets to you, and we've had a fair few injuries. Um, luckily, it seems that a lot of the, the players on these two teams have managed to pull themselves through. Good to see no injuries from the England boys as well. And, and larger list here. So we have uh, seven on the bench in, in Euro Cup to allow for that sort of stop-start. And... Everyone getting sore by the end of the day? Unfortunately, the Scottish girls only managed to bring nine with them, so they're a bit battered and bruised today. I did see one of the Scottish girls with a cast around her arm, <laughs> which seemed a uh, bit of a yeah. stretch to be playing. That's an icy injury. I'm actually it getting is. MRI results on Monday for a knee injury. Yeah, you've had a bad knee, haven't you? Yeah. You were using more tape than I've seen on, uh, <laughs> on a mummy on your knee. <laughs> well, so, Halloween is coming up, so yeah. I thought I'd start early. It's a bit of a lethargic uh, yeah. hand motion from the umpire there. But a uh, good, good win for the Dragon Slayers. And uh, again, our strength and conditioning mate, Cy Vardy, is uh, going to kick up the siren. Oh, well done, well done. We're just going to gonna switch off now just for a minute or two while we uh, catch our breath between the next game. So the next game here is uh, Scotland and the uh, and the Czech Republic, I think. And this must be getting close to one of the uh, one of the sort of bowl finals or. And we're on, we're on here, and <laughs> so five o'clock in uh, in Bordeaux here, and this is the men's plate final. So uh, we've got the uh, <laughs> and the crowds on. So it's quite a big crowd here. Everyone's very, very excited. It is seriously just for me up here. The. Uh, the Dutch guys have brought uh, one of the footy teams down. Uh, I think the Dutch, this is the Dutch uh, footy trip. So a few of the Aussie guys have come down to watch their, uh, their Dutch mates play. Watch out for them later this evening. Um, Scottish Klansman, Czech Republic. So we just watched the Scottish Klansman uh, defeat the Jerusalem Peace team. Um, I haven't followed the Czech, uh, the Czech Dragons today. I haven't, uh, haven't been lucky enough to catch them play, so interested to see them. And number 18 for the Klansman, he, uh, Campbell Lewis. He's, uh, he's known as a big spender, but he's also he's a big boy and he throws his weight around in the middle. And I think it'll be interesting to see him go, go early here. He uh, doesn't mind a bit of physicality, old Campbell Lewis. What about, uh, what about number 15, Robert McKinlay? He might be one to watch for the Scottish uh, Klansman. He yep. uh, apparently loves his card tricks, so maybe uh, maybe you'll be able to show some of that a bit, show off some of that later on tonight. A few tricks on the ground. A uh, couple of couple of strong players too. Uh, 
Scotty O'Hara's been uh, pretty good all day, and uh, and Daniel O'Connor too. A couple of co-captains, but uh, really led from the front. And what, and what about for the Czech, Czech uh, Republic, the Dragons? There, they've uh, David they've, David Thompson, a very Czech name, uh, <laughs> leading marker in the Czech league. Uh, and uh, Paul. Number 15, Paul Breedis, he's probably one to watch off half back. He's a really solid defender. Yeah, really powerful, isn't he? Um, so they're under a bit of a jumper clash almost yeah, going Yeah, it's on very here. quite difficult. So we're Czech with the yellow on the uh, on the shirts and, and Scottish with yellow on your shorts. <laughs> try and try to decipher that one. Um, the checker kicking to the left of screen and yeah, great uh, intercept mark there. Yeah, that's uh, so that's number four for the uh, that's Paul McGavin for the Scottish Klansman. Uh, obviously Shooter McGavin. Shooter. Shooter. So Shooter's, Shooter's backing himself and, here. Uh, do, do the, well, Probably, again top we'll, of the goal square. Yep. Benefit there. The ambition might have been uh, <laughs> yeah. word. And oh, uh, here he is. And so opening the score is... Um, and that was Campbell Lewis. Yeah, big Campbell. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Klansmen... <laughs> just to explain the, uh, the structure of the Euro Cup, we have um, a sort of round-robin uh, group stage and then a plate final, a bowl final and ultimately the men's cup final for the men's um, and the women's also have a uh, a tiered system as well um, so this here is the men's plate final which is the ninth place playoff so these two teams are playing for ninth and tenth and for the Czech Republic it's um I mean it's just great to see them have a team here today they've uh, footy is oh, still on out the back here almost oh. No, good tackle. Footy's still growing in the Czech Republic, and there's a, one man in particular to thank for that, and that's uh, Josip Krava from Croatia, who's really driving a, uh, a Central Eastern European league and building the game out so that his beloved Croatians have more teams to play against. And he's, uh, he's doing amazing things in that part of the world. And was instrumental in uh, getting Croatia to the International Cup earlier this year. And he'll, we'll try and get him on later and he'll tell you all about it. But, uh, <laughs> Croatians, Croatians this year actually, Croatians lost their early game to the, uh, the French and put them on the hard side of the draw with the uh, Irish. And so oh, knocked that's out, a, that's too high. I think the, uh, the umpire was blindsided there. Yep. Yep. That's Campbell Lewis again throwing his weight around. And that's Matthew Goodman uh, kicking the ball forward there. So who's, uh, who's down on the bench here? We've got a few uh, good side of the, uh, the Scottish bench. Number eight, uh, David Baldy. Uh, really, really not playing not up sure to his name, sure, isn't sure he? where they got that name from. Uh, number one, number one's the little fella, Daniel O'Connor. Get him back on, get that speed, uh, get that speed yeah, running. The captain on the ground for the final. This is the Croatians kicking out of defence here into the middle. And he's got the turn on him. Can't lose your feet in those sort of contests there. Oh, Yuzi, great handball. That's, that's just smooth. This, could be, this is a, That's a great goal. What a great I'll goal. I'll put that down as one of the goals of the, goals of the tournament so far that I've seen. He's there pretty happy about it here too. <laughs> so who is that? I'm not sure. Trying, to catch, exactly. a, trying to catch a number. But uh, the two players there. Um, and in Pulled the centre again, the great tap by the uh, by the Czech there, and strong plays. Good hands. The Czech, the Czech have got good, good sort of run and link up here. They do. They link up well by hand, and uh, that was what helped them get that first goal. Thanks to the water girl. Um, Um, okay, and the Czech, so the Czech Republic here, but Scots are running it out, and out of bounds on the uh, on the far side. We're sort of sitting half forward for the Czech. 
delicately poised here at the minute. Um, both sides just finding their feet early on in this final. It's, it's, it is like that, isn't it? It's that, uh, you know, little teetering little on the edge. Still trying to feel each other out. As the check go forward once again. And this could be a mark for the check here. That's a great mark. So the check, uh, the check aren't helping us out here with very small numbers on the uh, <laughs> on the clash jerseys. It's, uh, so we'll just do, we'll do our best here. Jesus, that's a great it. goal. That's a great that's goal. That's a great goal. And look at him get around him. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, taking it in his stride. Just doesn't look that wrapped with it, but I'm going to guess that's Thomas Nemec, who's uh, who's their captain. For the last six years, he's seen it all before. Really strong leader. You can see number uh, 16 for the check in the middle there, uh, Johan Loran. And excuse any of the pronunciations today, but uh, playing across the whole of Europe isn't easy. Oh, oh great spin. That's very nice. That's cute. What a spoon. And he usually wears Glasgow. But. Uh, but he lost them. Don't know what that means, but uh, probably got myself in trouble here. You need to take uh, take their opportunities here. The, uh, yep. the clans. And here's David Thank Thompson. So this is this is the marker, David. He's uh, he's leading marker in the Czech league. Um, so obviously knows how to find the footy. Oh, big ball to be won here. Oh, oof. that's a falcon and a half there. Number 14 for the uh, for the Scots, Stu Nicol. He's, he's playing in the Chicago Swans, Stu, so he's living over in the States, but come back for the tournament. Oh, and, uh, don't think That's he expected to get a ball in the face when he came back. Number seven for the Czech, Arno Benito. They call him Big Tuna, Benito. And uh, let's see if he can slot this goal. about 30 out. We have a wrestle from the big boys in the goal square. So, uh, for mine, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the Klansmen came out strong, but the, they seem to seem to be struggling a little bit here. Just didn't, just didn't take their chances, and then, uh, and then the Czech have really uh, got on top over the last five or six minutes. And I, think, uh, I think part of it is the, uh, the, Scots, the Scots had a game only half an hour ago, so oh, yeah, we come decision. back to that rotation and tie, you know, being tied. Yeah. So looking here to give the ball back to. Oh, yep. oh, they've just played on. The quick play. Slotted it. It was a mongrel punt, but as we've seen all day, when it goes through, it doesn't matter at all. The Klansman w weren't too sure about whether or not that was uh, behind his mark when he played on there. But, looked, um, looked to me from this counts. angle a bit on the side. but um, The score counts, right. and they've uh, jumped out to a handy lead here, 17 points. I think, Husey, to be honest, that's indicative of where the Klansmen have been in this first sort of 10 minutes. They weren't switched on there. Nah, there was they... no one protecting the mark, and, yep. you know, they got they got jumped. So we'll see here. The Klansmen have got to turn this around if there are any chance of taking right. the uh, the plate home. Oh, that, that's an unlucky bounce there. So here they go. Big boy. Big boy out of the fence. Nice kick, but yeah. No kick straight so we've seen uh, straight to the check, though. We've seen this all day, and it comes back to you know the coaching for all these teams. But oh, no wonder he's taking so many marks. He's using his head to catch it as well. <laughs> um, Finds a lot of space. Too. The structures, the structures that that are, are winning out, yes. and on a small pitch like this, having someone with the uh, the discipline to sit behind the ball, just that kick behind the ball, seems to be a very effective. Particularly uh, when the players get a little bit tired as well, because they uh, they tend to just blaze away a little bit, and if you've yep. got that spare behind the ball, um, you can really set the play up from there. That's right. And you know we're playing, we play these games on. Uh, rugby pitches here, uh, foot, you know, soccer, football pitches in, in some other parts of Europe, but rugby pitches in, uh, in Toulouse, which is what we could find. And so it's a, it's a shorter ground, quite a wide ground, but short. And so that directness, if you've got someone behind the ball with a 40, 50 yeah. metre kick, if you get it straight into your forward line, and that's where, that's where the goals are coming from on a day like today. It's a great kick towards goal, but marked on the, uh, on the goal line there by so, number four, that's Paul McGavin, shooter. And beautiful kick Great out to spot up. that's the big number seven. Big so tall. Liam Dolling. The he's younger one, the younger one. So <laughs> saw him play a little bit earlier. He's uh, he's, he's a strong mark and uh, good skills as well. 
He let up hard there. It's nice to see that sort of that, that hard lead and uh, and being used as well. Real player of the future. And look at that there another mark for him. He looks a skinny fella. So a couple of couple of uh, yeah, couple, couple of sessions. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh. Seemed to uh, thought he'd hurt himself there, but he jumped <laughs> straight back up. Oh no, now he's not too sure. Oh, a great, great defensive mark there. Mark. He's played on immediately. Oh, he's and missed he's it. Missed it. Missed that's it. A, but that's, that's a, a that's finish. Kieran. That's Kian Sheridan, which sounds more Irish than uh, Czech, but uh, obviously, uh, about as obviously Czech a Czech is, boy. Uh, about as Czech as David Thompson. <laughs> Uh, here we go, oh, number three is free out on the side. That's Samuel Ratt, Johnny Platten, and kicks back in board. Oh, it's a dangerous, dangerous. kick. Oh, he's got to win this ball, and he does. He does well. Forces it forward. And again, so that's, oh, um, that's a great tackle, though. Three, got Matty, his Matty Goodman. Goodman. Oh, beautiful tackle by, this, by the by the chair. It's a hot footy here at the minute. And oh. half time. I wonder if that will be paid. We'll no, check the umpires the umpire fully is... on this, but uh, umpires are going to discuss no, this. It looks like no. No. Remember, remember, it comes back to when the umpire heard the siren, not when they actually uh, when they put their hands up to signal half time. That's right. Remember that famous game down in uh, Tassie? Yeah. yeah it was it no, Launceston yeah. Oval, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. And, uh, they did a fair bit of work to improve the strength of the siren after, uh, after that one. Yes. So we so we've come into half time. It's uh it's the Scottish clansmen three points, Czech Republic Dragons are twenty one points. So quite a quite a strong lead here for the uh for the Czech. Can the clansmen get back into it here? Do you think, Ollie? Uh, from seeing them play today, I think they're playing unders at the moment. They're not playing their best football, and so if they start playing their best football, they can certainly get back into this. You, you wouldn't say uh, it's a strong breeze favouring either end today, though, would you? flashy stuff from there yeah that's right i think um i think liam dolling uh the, the younger one here he, he could be he could be someone they need to probably s swing deep forward yeah and uh oh and here we go say hi to the uh to everyone back home hello to your mothers hi mum yeah um so just uh just had news that the uh the irish warriors have got up in the uh in the other men's uh semi-final so we've got an we've got Not an island much, england though. Uh, double today, which is going to be going to be pretty interesting to uh, to see. There's a fair rivalry between the Irish and the English uh, in all things, but in uh, in AFL there is too. And uh, I watched the Irish English girls have a great grand final last year. It was probably the match of the tournament, from you know, in my opinion. Uh, and the atmosphere will certainly build here for the finals. Uh, Croatia uh, and Ireland in extra time was pretty good. Kieran's uh, over my shoulder, but uh, it was a pretty pretty great. They, both grand finals last year were great, and let's hope uh, let's hope we repeat that this year. So as we start the second half here, um, r really needs to be the uh, the clansmen to kick the first here. But um, as I say that, it's the Czech that go forward and kick the first. That was really a dusty sort of uh, fend off. Yeah, fend off and goal. What a start! That's exactly. I think that's, that's the big the big fellow there. It's almost on strut as he runs back to the middle. Yeah, there. I tell you what, he's pretty happy with himself, and so he should be. I would oh, be if I kicked that goal. He's, no, that's not Thomas. Gonna... That's um, that's Arno Benito again. Just just what they didn't want the clansmen if they were any chance no. to get back into it, but still plenty of time. There is now's now's when you you know you really see the character of uh, of the team and and the guys the in shoot, it. Shooter forces the ball forward, but once again they just like that really sort of strong target yeah. up forward. Beautiful kick out wide, and here's uh, Tomo. Oh, oh great, great tackle. tackle I reckon that's ball there. You had prior opportunity. Oh. And the crowd's, uh, the crowd's starting to get into it now. 
the atmosphere is just going to keep building here as we get towards the uh, the finals later on. As Ellie said, we've got uh, the Irish versus the English in both the men's and the women's. And punch off the ground. That's the sort of stuff from the sort of stuff we want to see from the uh, the clansmen here. Just forcing it forward and a beautiful tackle. He's only uh, only young only a young fellow number five. So so he's um, Keir Willisman. He's I think he's seventeen. This is um, uh, Chris. No, no, that, yeah, Chris Murray forces the ball forward here for the check. So I think there's about three number sevens for the check, I've just realised. I think I've been calling uh, the big tuner every time <laughs> Every time someone goes near the ball. But, um, oh well, he'll be, he'll be up there in the, uh, the team of the tournament afterwards. You can't, can't miss him. Sounds a bit like Kaiser Soze, Arno, Arno Benito, doesn't it? Sort of, maybe they're all, they're all him. Um, all right, so we're down... The check is just forcing this back forward for the... Uh, so here's our, uh, here's our umpire from, from the US, throwing the ball up in the check forward line. Good, good contest there, and oh, great tackle. Up immediately, no prior. The check have got two tackling there. They're really committed to, this, uh, to the contest here. Someone's down. Oh, great little spin. Forces it forward for a behind. The Scots are, the Scots are throwing changes, Hughes. They're trying to rotate as much as possible to get... Yeah, uh, Stephen, Stephen uh, Connery is really, as the coach, he's just trying to pull out all the, all the moves now. See whether he can spark this. Uh, <laughs> the check, take a mark and <laughs> another, go back. Another number seven. <laughs> Arno Benuto again. <laughs> and Jan Novak there, uh, just just behind him, nearly worth handing off to him. He's he's one of the most skillful players in the Czech team, sort of loitering around the back of uh, of seven. And uh, let's uh, just just quickly, we've uh, we've got uh, got a mate here from from the Irish team who's uh, who's just had a big win in the semi-finals. Oliver, how are you? Alan Tobin. What is oh, yeah. Or T Dog as he the calls himself. The dog. <laughs> here come the here come the clansmen. Oh, I hit the post. And I think that probably hurt him the extra padding that we have on the post here. Uh, that one looked close. The excitement so, is my favourite picture. So Dog, you've just had a uh, a big win in the semi final. It was it was close from all reports. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Germans have really come on in the last year and a half. Really, yeah. Their tackling is, is ferocious and their skills have come on. Uh, fair play to them. They're, uh, they're brilliant. Great test and uh, an even bigger test ahead of us. So, an yeah. even bigger test ahead of us in the final. Yeah, so how do you, who do you have to stop in the English uh, England Dragon Slayers yeah, to take that? have to out. stop Big Adam Booth, centre back. He's, just, he's got that free roll where he he just picks up loose ball and picks out his forward. He's, uh, he's an excellent player, so hopefully we can uh, we can lock him down. Are you going to plan for that? Sort of Dermy Yatesy start of the Dan Jackson grand. <laughs> Um, and and mate, I met you. I met you on the plane last night on the way over. We, there's a fair contingent coming from London. I, I, tell uh, tell everyone your story of how you got involved in uh, in footy because I, I I love hearing these <laughs> sort of things. I, I got involved in footy. Um, I met a, uh, a f myself and my girlfriend were at a boxing class in Clapham Common, and uh, this guy tried it on with my girlfriend and asked her to come down to the footy club. The ones were demons, and. Um, she had no interest, but she said my boyfriend might. The guy who tried it on was about five foot four. I'm six foot, I'm six foot three. So he saw, uh, saw gold in his eyes when he saw me coming, and uh, it's been the best thing I've ever done. It's yeah, that was that was a year and a half ago now, wasn't January it? January 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, had my first training session on Valentine's Day, so I, uh, I got my priorities right. <laughs> <laughs> And you, you're sort of obsessed with the game now, which is, uh, you know, we have these we have these stories. I, so I was sitting on the plane uh, next to the big T-Dog and uh, we started talking and next thing I know there's this strong Irish accent telling me every play of the grand final and every favourite player and it's just amazing that, that people come from, you know, the other side of the world and, and fall in love with a native game. Absolutely. And, and this, is, this is why I truly believe this game will grow. Absolutely, and it's it's great to see it on such a global level. Like there's fifteen was it fifteen men's and seven women's teams here. Yep, it's just a great sport. Yep, looking and forward to tonight. Well, mate, you go you go rest up, have a, have a glass of water, and uh, and we'll be uh, we'll have a beer later. We'll have a beer later. 
A big game coming up uh, later on, just to repeat that, the Irish versus the English and the men's final coming up for you shortly. And so I think uh, this one looks like looks like the Scots are sort of... Yeah, it could be just about done, yeah. I think, yeah. I can't see I can't see much life left in the Scots here. 20, 22 point margin. It'd be uh, it's just it's all about taking your chances really. Zero goals, five um, for the Scottish clansmen, and um, they'll be ruining some missed opportunities earlier on in this game. I mean, you're right there. If you kick five goals straight. You're, Sorry, you're leading by three points in this game, and you know on your way to a uh, a plate cup. Yeah, a, a plate win. But for all these guys, I mean the you know the Scots the Scots have been been here for the last three years and you know they're building and to get the experience into into all of these guys they'll only be better for the run and their league will get stronger um, and so there's this, there's a skillful one Jan Novak a fast guy for the Scots there yeah, a little bit funly though that's that's Harry Black um, one of the younger players in the team yeah he looks like he's got all the speed. He just needs to get the uh, that first touch, sort of uh, first touch, which comes from you know training session after training session. It's up in the ruck here. It's a good contest, oh, and Jan Novak Dan. just missed. Just missed. It's another point for the uh, for the Czech. The Czech Republic Dragons, and that takes them to 28 points to five. So leading by 23 deep into this uh, into this plate final. One of the uh, one of the Scottish guys. Not giving a lot of room there on the mark, but this is if they can get it on out the back here, they could be on. Oh, the big fella! Oh, it looks like he's into touch there. So that's Campbell Lewis and uh, real fan favourite Campbell. All day, mate. All day. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they really, they really love him. Crowd favourite, crowd favourite Campbell Lewis. <laughs> and here come the check again. So number sixteen, Johan Luran, Luarn. Let's see, this will be a hard kick here. I think uh, we've got the camera right minutes. behind this one. We'll uh, have a good view of whether or not he can slot this. <laughs> oh, he's kicked it pretty well. Great mark. Great mark by the, uh, by the Klansman deep in defence there. And they've got to move it quickly, and they do. Out to number five here in the far side. That's Keir Wotherspoon who marks the ball. Oh, great kick to bring the ball inside. Is it going to pay off? Does well. Forces it forward, but again it's the Czech who it's probably been where they've fallen down all day, the Scots. They've just uh, struggled to find that target in the forward 50. Oh, and he's free here. He's really found some space in the forward line there. Number two there. That's, That's uh, Chris, Chrissy Chris Murray. Murray. He's trying to throw the mouth guard aside there and don't Absolute need that. confidence. And unfortunately missed that. Yeah, he picks his mouth guard up. And he's so calling looks, for a rotation now. He's had enough. Looks to me, for those, for those watching and waiting for the next game, it looks like the next game's going to be the Dutch versus the Welsh. Uh, which will be the uh, the men's bowl final, fifth place playoff. Um, we're just sort of just waiting to see, but they're uh, they're warming up at either end of the ground. And the uh, as teams start to finish, Husey, they're, they're filling out the grandstand here, and it's um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the atmosphere. Uh, as come we get finals a bit later on. <laughs> Our French hosts have been nice enough to create a a Euro Cup labelled Bordeaux wine for the tournament. Uh, so that's going to be enjoyed after after the game's finish. And here come the Scots. One more time. Really, really strong there. That's that's a courageous mark by uh, by number eight for the uh, for the Dragons. Yeah, I think a few of the uh, few of the teams that have finished might already be 
starting to enjoy some of that Euro Cup uh, labelled wine already. And this is the young fella. This is the 17-year-old, and that's uh, just missed. But um, Jeez. Yeah, that's a lot for the future there for the uh, for the clansmen. They've got this 16-year-old, 17-year-old leading them leading them up forward. Yeah, the scoreboard probably doesn't do ju do justice to this contest. They've had uh, plenty of opportunities, the clansmen, and um, they just haven't been able to haven't been able to kick, kick the goals to turn this into a real contest. I think that's right, but I just I, I can't I feel that they haven't really come this game. They haven't. Uh, yeah. They may be a bit tired at this stage of the tournament because I've seen a lot better from them earlier on. Yeah. And that's it. I think that's the siren. Yep. But Shot probably, out to the siren. Probably a little hot for these it's a uh, party time here. These Scottish guys, used to the you know used to the beautiful beautiful weather it's up in warm. Scotland. It's um, a lot further south. A little icing on the cake to finish there. So the final score is the Czech Republic Dragons 35 to the Scottish Klansmen 6. Con congratulations to the Czech Republic. Yeah, it's you know for them for them it was a challenge just to get here and to take home from silverware. I think is um it's an amazing effort and we should take our hats off to the uh, to the Czech team and all, all the guys that are. And well done so under, the, well under the coach Kevin uh, Kevin Lyons who he uh, he's been playing in footy in Australia since about 2005. He, does a lot of umpiring now, but um, great that he was able to steer this Czech Republic team to a win today. Let's go through a couple of boys, a couple of boys in the team. Thomas Nemec, yeah, who captains the team. Um, he's he's been around forever with uh, playing footy in in the Czech Republic. Then there's there's a few other guys that have sort of really helped to build this team. Marian Plitsek, uh, Jacob Komarek, and Jan Novak have been you know all putting in great efforts today. David Thompson kept marking. And yeah, and Paul Breeders. Uh, and again, again, you know, this this Czech outfit probably wouldn't be here today without without the amazing work of uh, Josip Krava, who, you know, from from his base in the, in Zagreb in Croatia, has really built out this. All right, we'll be back in about two minutes with the uh, the Welsh and uh, Dutch teams.
Uh, this is the uh, uh, between the the Flying Dutchman the Holland team. Done really well here. Right here. So ball so, up here inside the uh, Dutch forward line. Dutch Great got tap a very out. tall ruckman there. There's, they should have the ascendancy in the middle with. Uh, is that number twenty-four? He broke. He's at twenty-four. Two. Old. Jesus. Look after this. Will be there, I think. Um, it's about. Oh. <laughs> Probably standard in that. But, uh, <laughs> no, he, he could be the difference today. If he, uh, first Another hit. Yeah. I'll beat him. Very well. Too far. No. no. Oh, well, it's fair way. That's a. Pretty well. He might be hitting to the ball up here against midfield. Good. Oh, great. 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 This is, uh, uh, this is to Munich for study. He's uh, a real thing. Oh, and he's rocking. Playing again. And just doesn't screw it around. Oh, is that a one? There's two number ones. We've been through again. Apologies to anyone who's name with you. We're working off some uh, some team sheets and, and playing our best. So we're going to have a quick chat. Uh, that's it. Uh, and there we go. First goal. Of, first goal of the final to the uh, to the Welsh. So that's a, the perfect start. We're very lucky to have Tomasz Nemec here from the uh, Kreis, uh, the Czech Republic Dragons, uh, fresh off uh, fresh off a victory in the plate final. So well done, mate. That's a that's an amazing uh, amazing sort of turnaround for you and to get a team here and then to win a, a plate final. Thank you very much. It was an amazing day. We didn't expect it, and the dream came true. <laughs> And Thomas, uh, uh, Thomas, how many, how many uh, players are there in uh, in the Czech Republic? Ah, uh, basically, we used to have like six years ago there were four teams, but in last years it got worse and worse. So right now, basically, it's one, two teams playing. So we attend Central European League against uh, together with Croatia, Italy, and Austria. And so we we had a bit of a chat, and here here the Welsh are again. They're looking very strong. So just a great goal for the Welsh there. Um, the, the Central European League is is fascinating, and it's, um, it's uh, I think a really good good sort of show of what can be done in areas of uh, of the world, but of Europe in particular. And can you tell us what yossip has been able to create in in the Central European League? Um, I didn't get it. So so what? Explain. Can you explain to people who are watching what what is the Central European League? Uh, it's basically like um, under the AFL Europe, but it's like. Um, for Central, Central East and we involve as well Italy, so South Europe as well. And we gather together uh, to have bigger tournaments, something like a preparation for EU Cup, basically. 
just don't play the local small leagues, but have a few big events during the year. So it allows a, it allows a country like uh, the Czech Republic to have games against many other many other teams rather exactly. rather than just playing internally. Exactly. And talking about today's game, who who do you think from uh, from the Dragons was who was your strongest player today? Well, I would I would have to say Honza Novak, our Czech guy. He's he's small, but he's he is really fast and good skills. So he can play on a big guy, but he can still get the ball. And and how about yourself? I mean, you're a few right there. I was happy with your performance today. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> and um, how about one one other question for you before um before we let you go and start to enjoy the celebrate the victory? Um, how did you find AFL? So what what was your sort of pathway to AFL? It was six seven years ago. On high school, one of one friend of mine, he he brought me into it. He said like, hey, don't you want to try some some uh, new sport? It's called Aussie Rules, and I was like, yeah, why not? I tried it once, and I never could stop. And and when where was that? Where was high school in in Prague? In Prague. Okay. And ha why was your friend playing uh, Aussie Rules? Um, because he uh, he worked part time with some another. Who do you support in the uh, <laughs> Sydney? Uh, what about this year? I'm too good, but I did. did okay. Yeah, go, go and celebrate with me. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And so, while we're doing that, the. Uh, uh, away here, is he? They certainly have um, they've started beautifully here. Three goals, one to nothing. But as we say that, it's the, it's the Dutch forcing the ball forward, pushed out of bounds on the full. Okay, so here, here come the Welsh again. Number 14, spreading really well for the contest. Your contest. Couple of blocks to get um didn't work. So a couple of I mean the Welsh the Welsh have the advantage. I mean a couple of GB boys. Anders. Who else? Who else? Boys here. Come in the uh, IC. The Welsh team. And I think it's it's showing already in this final. So huddle at half back for the uh, for the Dutch and they're spread. They've gone to the tall guy. Three, the ruckman. That's uh, Pierre Duval. He can double up as a hard tackling mid. They say. So. It's always good to have. Oh, big contest. contest. Big strong contest there, and good good work by both of the guys there to keep going hard at the ball. Oh, good mark. And strong mark. So this is uh, that was Nico Kamansky, and uh, he's uh, he's an Argentinian rugby convert who loves the game. Uh, Dutch Dutch as well as Argentinian, but um, really showed his skills there, and you know I'm sure they're very happy to bring him across to. Oh no, that's sorry. I'm, I think I'm... that was Callum, Callum Newman actually. Uh, yep, yep. No, he's you've got a, me there. Yeah, he's a real rapid player, but um, great. <laughs> Great, great mark, and um, yeah, really set that goal up for for the Welsh, who have jumped out to a 26-point lead and look like they're uh, going to be too strong here. Absolutely dominant so far. Oh, it's on out the back here. That was uh, that was number 14, Tom Case in the forward line. There is the. Uh, oh, sorry, that was uh, number 14, George Coleman, uh, Gordon Ramsay. So that was Callum again, wasn't it? Yeah. Callum, Callum Newman. He hands it off. Touched on the line, oh, though. Yeah, good defence there. Well defended by um, my number 11, Michael Van... Van... Ick. 
It's his first Euro Cup was in 2008. So he's, this is his fifth year, yeah, fifth Euro Cup. And that's, um, I mean, it's pretty impressive to get to one, two. You know, he's played for his country five times, Michael. The Welsh seem to be repelling everything here, though. Everything that comes uh, comes out. Big fella oh, turns. It's a post. That's uh, Che Davies Smith. He's uh, he's one of the new players in the team, and um, yeah, Big they're boy. certainly doing all the attacking. There's Gordon. Gordon Ramsay. He's uh, certainly a crowd favourite. So, uh, Kieran O'Hara here joining Husey. So, interesting game. Wales looking like they'll have some silverware at the end of the day. Yeah, they've certainly uh, certainly been on top early in this game. Um, as the Dutch uh, look to f look to make their way out of defence, they go long to the to the big ruckman. Long way back for Holland here at this stage, or the Netherlands, I should be saying. So uh, they had a good win at the start of the day. They beat Scotland by a point. Uh, then lost to. Good effort. That was two. Uh, yeah, Oliver Rees there forcing the ball forward, having a shot on goal that just uh, pushed to the right hand side. Um, He's a new player, new player into the Welsh side. Um, they say he's the pest from the West. Flying Dutchman just having a bit of a problem clearing their own lines here from their kick-ins. Yeah, they're, they're going long to the Ruckman every time. It's a little bit predictable. They just need to get some numbers in and around uh, the fall of the ball there. If that's their, if that's their plan, they need to really support the, the Ruckman number, number 24 there. That's um, Bas Van Schie. Oh, great That's kick a great forward. kick in. Unfortunately, they weren't able to take the mark there, but... Again, another I GB player, Owen Ryland. The siren went there just before the kick, and so that's it. It's half time, and uh, the Welsh Red Dragons are 29. The Flying Dutchman yet to score zero. So how many uh, how many players, Kieran, would you from this Welsh Welsh side uh, played in the, for the GB side um, at the recent international cup or, or generally? Well, generally, I think um, in the past we would have had guys like David Saunders would have been a stalwart of the GB team. I'm not sure that he did make the IC this year, but number one, Owen Ryland, consistently is one of the best GB players. Um, Torn on our side for Ireland. Any time that they've gotten it over us, he's generally been the best on ground. He's a really, really mobile player, smart, plays from behind, uh, and just picks out the best kicks. But then if you you look around, I mean, there's, the thing about this this Welsh group is that they have been together for a number of years. Guys like Tom Case would have been playing now for over a decade. And actually the coach, Josh Davey, Josh was one of the umpires at the IC that's just gone. Okay, there you go. So... Um Josh Davy, has he um, he's been involved in in footy in Wales for a while, or he has. Um, Josh actually, and um, I think Rhys Morgan would have been on the European Legion team some years back that played against uh, the AFL Academy. The AFL Academy. So okay. when would that have been? That would have been a few years ago now. Uh, probably maybe 2012 or, or 2013 yeah. in Dulwich. Yeah, uh, quite a crop. I think um, Matthew Boyd was on, or Boyd was on that team, and yeah. A lot of the guys that we're now seeing yeah, coming to tuition with GWS. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they certainly had a, uh, a plethora of draft picks around that time, the GWS, and you can see that they've been able to um, compile a really strong list. So as we're about to start the second half here, it's uh, the Welsh Red Dragons uh, 29 to the Flying Dutchman get to score and we'll, uh, they'll certainly want to kick the first goal in the second half, the, the Flying Dutchman. It's a positive start, they've won the tap but <laughs> not got to the fall of it unfortunately. Uh, they've, had, uh, they've had some dominance in the ruck but they haven't been able to convert that into clearances. That's a really strong tackle but number 20 for the Welsh has been able to break free and it's... That's a good mark. 
Callum Newman, who's been, uh, he's taken a couple of good marks early. He's uh, got some good size about him, some good hands, and this should be another goal. Yeah, so it is. That's looking like a tougher task again now for the Flying Dutchman, unfortunately. I think the one thing about today that possibly people won't understand watching on the stream is it is quite warm. It's been 14, 15 degrees all day. Um, there's very little wind, so it takes it out of the players, and particularly when you're in your fifth match, which these guys are now. Yeah, five matches of, of footy, but it's um, it's just a stop-start as well, though. By the time you sort of warm up and warm down, and um, certainly, certainly a toll on your body. As the Welsh go forward again, and they kick another goal. And that's quite the goal by, uh, it looks like it might have been Rhys Morgan. Yeah. Or Nasher, as he was nicknamed in the Legion team. Real scrapper and workhorse of this team. He's, uh, he's kicked a great goal there, though. There was nothing um, workhorse about that. That was brilliant. Or it could have been Scott Jones. The numbers are very similar on the course. Actually known forces the ball forward, but uh, there's no one there for the Dutch. And the Welsh clear the ball again, a great kick. It's uh, Aaron Gale again. Real grunt and uh, very direct in their plays. Decided to give it a go. They're quite lucky. They're really starting to move the ball really well here. Uh, the Welsh team, they well well coached, and um, some of their structures are really starting to play out in the second half. Of course, very unlucky to lose to England earlier in the day in the group game, the group stage. So, you know, on the basis of what we've seen from England since, you can you can say that yeah. the Welsh are quite an able side. Yep. Uh, it's a great mark, and again, we're, the numbers are a little bit hard to see we'll, here. I think sure we'll go with number eight, Scott. Yeah. Push the lead out. Again, no mistake. And as they do in uh, in proper AFL terms these days, they kick a goal and you run to the bench for a rotation. And he's had an impact in the first five minutes of this uh, second half and he's earned a well-earned break. And as he comes off the field for interchange, it's we establish six. it's number six. <laughs> it is Reese Morgan. I was right the first time. I guess just that little bit of experience that some of the Welsh guys will have playing in AFL England and AFL London showing through in this game. A free kick there. Going to the uh, going to the Dutch. That's number that's number ten, that's Nico Kamansky, who's uh, the Argentinian rugby convert and he absolutely loves the game and the big man number 24 Bas Van Schke has gone into the square so let's see can they find him it's a good kick oh Jeez, he's been in the play a lot there Gordon Ramsay but um, just unable to uh, unable to take that mark Having the on the kick in the Dutch. Not some pressure on in the back no prior Hard at the moment. Oh, great mark. Again, that's Callum Newman who was uh, he's three or four great marks in this. Uh, in the second half. Scooped up the ball there. As, uh, thanks, Kieran, for, uh, for stepping in there as we've got Ollie uh, Howard's joined us again. Yes. And uh, certainly looks like this game's well and truly, well and truly done, Ollie. Yeah, I, it does, doesn't it? I've been uh, watching, watching from uh, getting a tiny bit of sun and... Uh, <laughs> letting the voice box rest for a second, Hizzy. Um, 
Yeah, yeah the, Welsh, they, the Welsh are very, uh, very impressive here. Yeah, as Kieran yeah, was yeah. saying, they were unlucky to lose to um, lose to the English side earlier in a really competitive game. Um, and um, with England going on and playing in the final later on, that's probably an indication of exactly how strong this Welsh team is. So we mustn't be long to go now, but 53 points lead to the Welsh. It's a big, big boy, number 10 for uh, for the Welsh, Callum. That's a. Uh, we were speaking about him earlier, Callum Newman. Yeah, he's been brilliant in this second half, that's for sure. He's taken a number of marks. And they are two on one, pushing it forward oh. again. Could be in the back there to the uh, to the Dutch, but keeping his feet number one for the Welsh. Oh. It's quite tricky. Should have gone, should have gone in the air there. BT wouldn't have liked that one. <laughs> York Coleman manages to get back and uh, force the ball through. So a good show. I think the Dutch can be pretty proud with their performance today. A couple of uh, couple of strong wins, and maybe just a little outclassed in this uh, in this final for fifth place. And as has happened all day, they go long long to a, a pack uh, from the kick out and um, just the Welsh managed to get numbers to the fall of the ball and uh, win, those, win those clearances all the time. We can see the, uh, the Irish Banshees uh, warming up in the background there so they're going to be on shortly playing against the English Vixens uh, in the women's final, a uh, repeat of last year's Euro Cup final. Um, Nice clearance, nice clearance from the Dutch there, and get this into touch, reset here. The number seven, number seven for the Dutch, Cyril. And he's, there, he's, he's probably their most new, you know, enthusiastic of players. I, I, I caught Cyril er, earlier and he absolutely loves the game. And the crowd seemed to love Cyril too. That's... Prides himself on his fitness, Cyril, so let's hope he can run this out a little bit. Himself there, 13. That's Pitt Saunders. Uh, he's, he's never lost his uh, team in the tournament jersey. Jersey. Tell you what, he looks like he's... <laughs> Is that Dave, David Saunders? Yeah, it looks like the King of Welsh footy has gained a crown there. A fair bit of bandage on the head. Um, here he comes. Here he is. Here he is with his crown on, David Saunders. And, on and he's got a spare uh, man over the top. Inside. And he's got to run here. He's got that's, to move. Play on. Have the Fox. confidence. What can he do with it? He goes and inboard. A bit dangerous oh, inboard, right but option, nice turn. But could still work out here. There we well go. Done. Running all over them here. It's party time now for the Welsh. That's a great passage of play there. Really, uh, you know, showed all their skills from right from the back line, keeping possession of the ball through the middle. Yeah, nice late, little blind turn. Yeah, late in the day, you see that uh, if, they're met, if they're able to switch the ball across the, the back line and really opens it up as the opposition are unable to sort of spread and cover the outlet. So, um, yeah, just a great, a great effort there by the Welsh to kick another goal. Um, so this game's going to and here they come again, David Saunders again. He's been pretty good today. He's been very solid. Backtracking, but still got the run and should carry on there. Could have got that back. Oh, that's a huge, huge shepherd there for the Welsh. And good to see, good to see the Dutch guy jump straight back up from that. Roy. Roy Verkelen, well done to uh, take that hit and keep going. Fair hit, but, uh, but a big one. Makes me pretty happy not to be playing anymore. <laughs> here come the Dutch out of defence. They've got the run, but they're falling down at half forward here. Another good shepherd. The, the Welsh seem to be shepherding well for each other. They're playing as a, playing as a unit. David Saunders getting the ball inside uh, inside the forward arc there. He's been outstanding in the last few minutes. 
He's really turned it on, hasn't he? Great display. So we're coming down to the end of this uh, end of this bowl final, and the Welsh will take out. Oh, strong mark in the square. No, the Welsh will take out fifth place, and the Dutch will uh, will leave with a sixth place finish, which is um. Great result for both of them. I think the, the Welsh probably would have had aspirations of getting uh, into the third place playoff or the final this this uh, this time around. But, um, you know, they, 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 uh, they'll only be these tournaments. Well, Neil Cook. Great yes. goal. Back on. Happy to see you. I want the scoreboard. That goes absolutely. Seems to be a fair head. The last few plays of the uh, uh, great strong attack. The, uh, the Dutch can get on. She's in the English Vixens.
So welcome back, uh, Ollie Howard here, and lucky to be joined by Lauren Spark, one of the Bulldogs uh, AFLW stars. So welcome, Thanks, Lauren. Ollie. Thank you. I don't know about stars, but yes, one of the players there. <laughs> so Lauren, um, I think you've, I mean, you've lived over in London for uh, how many years were you in London? Yeah, I was here for a couple of years uh, and headed back to Oz in uh, November of last year. Before the inaugural season. Yeah, yeah. Um, just happened to be kind of right place right time and and uh, nominated ended up getting drafted and then had to had to fly back and um yeah and headed back into Witten Oval. and can you tell us um tell us a little bit about that sort of i mean it's an amazing success but the first season of aflw yeah look like you said i'd been over here for a couple of years and i'd um i, I had no kind of expectation as to how big it had grown i played the initial games back in 2013 2014 uh with the bulldogs back then and uh now to see that there was going to be eight teams in a full national competition was unbelievable. So to go back and then straight into Witten Oval and to see a full squad of, of players and, and support staff and coaching team and, and the facilities we were able to use, it was, was pretty mind-blowing, actually. And to meet the Dogs uh, in a season after their, you know, that, yeah. that, that amazing premiership victory, it must have been a pretty, pretty special club to be around. Absolutely. The vibe, the vibe around the club was amazing. Just... The whole, the boys, their support staff, their team, the supporters especially. Um, I actually work in a school nearby, uh, Footscray, and, and houses were painted, fences were painted, flags flying, windows had bulldog stuff throughout it. So, um, yeah, it was an amazing vibe to get back into. And how would you go uh, this year? Personally, how did the team? How did the team go? The team, we we had a bit of expectation on our shoulders, and we lost a, a few girls early and uh, through injury. But um, we, we did okay. We did okay. A couple of wins on the board at the end of the season. Well done. And, and here we are. So we've, we've just started the, uh, the women's final here. And there's a bit of bad blood between the, uh, the oh, Irish and English teams. A bit. <laughs> a lot. So you've coached, you've coached the English girls. Yeah, so um, not England specifically, but no. uh, uh, in amongst with uh, the GB Swans. So obviously the English girls and the Scottish girls. Yep. Uh, were there as well, so um, not not England specifically, but um, I've had a lot to do with them. Played with a lot, uh, a few of them through at the Wimbledon Hawks, and then um, yeah, I've obviously coached coached them uh, in Melbourne about a month ago. So who should who should we be watching out for in these first sort of five minutes of, of a grand final? Who who's gonna you know who's gonna straight line the ball? Who's gonna take someone out? Yeah, I think. As opposed to what we saw in Melbourne, the 18 aside competition, 9 aside really allows it. And as we see now, Alex Salter gets on the end of it and handballs to Danny Salter. They're the two I was going to yeah. mention. The, the two sisters have an unbelievable... And Laura too, dude. Yeah. So an unbelievable um, knowledge of the game and, and them two being able to play so many games together with the Scorpions. Uh, <laughs> sorry, the crowd's gone crowd, wild up crowd here. Crowd favourite for Brioni. She, I mean, she was oh. dominant in the last game she played on this ground. Um, she's, she's a pretty special player to have at full court. Absolutely. I've just been in absolute... And there she goes. There she is. Yeah, it's so, so great to see another first-timer into the competition. And I'd heard about her coming over. I'd never actually seen her play. And there we go. <laughs> and, a little bit of, and a little bit of push and shove to go with it. Uh, it comes from a rugby background, so it doesn't mind a bit of push and shove, a bit of the hard stuff. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so uh, really great to see right. her come into her own and, and take a few, a, a, a heap of overhead marks and 
and really uh, throw the body around. And I think that's been that's been the impressive thing. Uh, you know, the, the sort of tactic of kicking on Brioni's head, and, and she's she's really stood tall. I mean, she's yeah, she's got a couple of inches on her opponent here, so you should you should try. You know, the, the English girls should be trying to make the most of that uh, matchup. I think that's been their plan all day, and it, it hasn't faltered once. So I think they've. Obviously, got got a game plan in, in mind, and they they just need to stick to that today. The one thing we know about the Irish, though, is they don't take a backward step, and uh, you know we're we're going to see them come here. And you know, the Irish the Irish Banshees team is full of you know full of girls that have played the game for a long time, that have, have played a number of Euro Cups, a number of ICs. Um, a lot of a lot of girls come across from the uh, the Ulster Kookaburras. Um, there's a fair few from the Wandsworth Demons, the Dublin Angels. They, they really, you know, these girls play a lot of footy. So, and who's that? Just breaking out of a pack there. Beautiful, beautiful play, and spreading to the to the open side here. One on one. Against uh, Nora. And go by. And, um, and, uh, she's grand final at I-17, so she's, uh, she's done on the big stage. <laughs> she's up and about. She's up and about. <laughs> she's, uh, she's probably still hungover from uh, the IC celebrations. I would be. The, um, the, this, uh, a, a number of these girls in the, in the Irish band, she's team who went out to Australia yeah. with, uh, came to so We were uh, knew that team to beat, and that England Ireland fight was last year, the, the ones that got over the line, um, Melbourne, both, um, having a lot of open and free, and yeah, quite a lot of the Irish girls have come back a bit more experienced. All day. But you, you get her kicking to half back, and this sort of here, if that works, can really hurt. hurt that. Nice. nice defense there. From Bailey. And Another great there. That's Lisa Wilson. Team Lisa. Couple of great balls there. Both Lisa's okay. Yeah. Eagerly with that coming out of the eye. She's got a pace for the next time on uh, AFL. Nick Dolls. <laughs> so the, the Irish get a bit of uh, uh, a bit of sort of moment here. Yeah, they're in this forward uh, pocket for quite a bit. It's a bit. So that's, yeah. uh, that's Carolyn Cassidy, and so she's um, that uh, should have been Carolyn Cassidy's Nora. free kick there. She um, she took it, but uh, Nora Mulkley takes a kick. Uh, great roving. Should have been a free kick in front of goal, I think. Uh, holding, holding the man, holding the woman. Holding the woman. We'll go with that. Bit of a foot race out here as Alex Peel follows it over the line for a throw in. So tell us about the draft for, um, for AFLW. So how, how did it work for the people at home that don't uh, that don't know? How, how did you end up at the Bulldogs? Um, yeah, I'm still really kind of asking myself that. But um, I, I, like I said, I played the new game from the. Um, I knew I was had intent back home and nominated. It's a matter of speaking to some of the coaches and the coaching team and seeing where they what spots they had available where they would see me fitting. Um, and to be honest, there was minimal, minimal chat with, with the Bulldogs. Um, and yeah, myself and Lisa Wilson actually um, sat up about 4 a.m. on uh, about this time last year and, uh, and watching our internet and out and break, get picked, different team. And there's a rugby ski. There it is. And she takes off, and that's her second play. Fantastic. Beautiful. 
Um, yeah, so um, just by chance, I think uh, they saw a spot available for me. I was still still open for pick. And then, yeah, fortunately for me, my num uh, name got called out at 76 uh, overall pick. And yeah, so I had to. Any had other to book famous 76ers floating about? Is there? I don't know. <laughs> Heard, James Heard was. 72. Oh, gosh. Um, okay, and so, and so where, do you, where do you see the women's game going? I mean, oh, there's no doubt there's only this way, year was a success. There's only way but up. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And going back there and um, now seeing the, the clubs, I was, I was saying a bit earlier, actually, now seeing the AFL clubs scrambling to try and get a women's team who, they've just seen the amount of, uh, families, women, how much it's increased their, uh, the vibe around their clubs. And unfortunately, a couple of these teams that didn't apply first round weren't able yeah. to kind of get involved this second round and missed out on, on a possible some, application. There'll be some teams ruining that decision, really. 100%. I, I think and when, it's, when it's huge in you know, two, three, one year's time, looking back and, and really regretting not, not to catch as one. Yeah. Absolutely. And then when they do catch the wave, when they do end up out at, let's hope, 18, 18 teams, those those later teams to join are going to be behind the AFL because the other teams have had four, five, six years behind them. So yep. um, lovely uh, rock tap and right follow on. up there from Rania Ramadan. Um, we were talking before about Rania, actually. So her, her and Laura got married in the summer. Which they nice. did, so they did. And vice they like to say that they honeymoon in Melbourne at the IC, which a week straight after a wedding to me is a honeymoon, but... <laughs> On the other side of the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, they did manage to sneak off to Fiji after after the IC for their honeymoon, but we like to say that their honeymoon was actually uh, the IC in Melbourne. That's how much they love their footy. And you've probably got more insight than I do into this, but does Laura play captain in the relationship? Or is, uh... <laughs> I'm not involved in their relationship, but... Um, no, I think their relationship works. It is brilliant. It, it, it just works. It just works brilliantly, and um, you just see them. They're just perfect for each other. So I'm so so wrapped for do them. They made, do they make each other playing footy? Yeah, um, actually through uh, soccer football. So okay. Not, okay. Not AFL football. Yeah. Well, that's, I, I think it's one of, you know, one of, the, one of the, the great things, and and back to back to the growth of the women's game. We've seen it in Europe. So. Uh, one of the great stories that I was told last year at the Euro Cup was from the Croatians, who um, yeah. put a sign at the university in the room to get some new guys. And all, all the said was, you know, come play Aussie rules football, come to the park at you know, five o'clock. And the coach turns up at the park and there's about 15 young girls there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And he thought, you know, what's, what's going on? And he realised he didn't put on it. Gender specific. Game, yeah, right. Game, it's anything. And, and suddenly they've got a, you know, a, a, a growing, strong female yeah. footy sort of centre now. Absolutely, and that's what I've spoken about before as well, is that the amount of new teams and the girls playing in Melbourne alone, but let alone over here and... Oh, Danny's put that through. Danny Salter's just kicked that about Danny 40 metres. Absolutely got on the end of that. that one. So, the, so the English... Uh, I mean, the game feels good, but uh, uh, it's separate. Yeah, yeah, the last one halted for, for a bit. Uh, the, um, yeah, on the growth side, um, coming here two years ago, in terms of uh, the UK, in terms of the UK, to, to turn up and not even have a, a London league to then start up with four and then have an amazing first season with um, the four initial women's teams in London and then to grow out into the second year. There's still the same four teams, but we managed um, a lot of the rounds actually full 18 aside uh, teams. There was one round there where we had 18 aside. The initial first season was just kind of however many girls you had. Yep. You play with that with maybe a couple on the bench. And then to this year where... Um, they've managed to, to draw it out to uh, two divisions, to eight teams across two divisions. It's amazing. Um, it's, just, it's just showing the growth of it um, yeah, worldwide.
There's half time. So, so the English really with the ascendancy in the, in the first half. I'd probably say it's that more direct play uh, through to through to the big sort of pillar head. Yeah, I feel like they're they're probably linking up a little bit better around around the ball yep. and. Um, the, the Irish pressure has been um, phenomenal and the tackling pressure, but I think the, the English have just been able to slip their hands free and, um, yeah, get the well, hand you balls out. You mentioned it earlier, the, the strength of the Irish has always been that link-up fast play, and yeah. I, I don't think they've, they probably haven't found that, that sort of rhythm just yet. They, yeah. can, they can score quickly, though, the Irish. That's, they can. They, they, that's their, as soon as they, they get a ball and a turnover, that's their game, and, and with most with a Gaelic background, um, yeah, that's that's the game, the running game, and and the play on. So, yeah. um, I feel like maybe England have, have been able to stop that and clog up the space a bit for them. Well, I'm looking forward to this second half. I think. Um, well, we know we know that Irish are going to bring it. Irish going to come. They? They're going to come. And yeah, if if we've seen anything from them over the years, it's they won't give up. Uh, won't give up too quickly. So, look at number twelve for I for Ireland. Trying to work out, but the big tall, the big tall Ruckman. I think she's. And so who? Who, uh, who do you follow in the AFL, though? Oh, I'm actually a mad kangaroo supporter. So. Really. North Melbourne Kangaroos not such a great year this year, so I no. kind of. But they've got a license for the women's. For, uh, they do. Uh, they yeah. do. So maybe some trade week. Uh... <laughs> Who knows? Let's just. I'm just happy to say on any. But if it happened to be in the uh, blue and white stripes, I wouldn't be opposed either. Uh, we're back on here, and so here we go. The, the number twelve for Ireland, big tall girl in the ruck. I think uh, a lot's going to be on her shoulders to get the first touch here and, and really start the second half the girls and then we've got uh, Claire Cunningham in the middle who's resting away with Laura but Mr. Manya comes through. It's great clearance. Great to get that first boot. clearance. But here come the Irish. And a Alana Blount. It's right there. And just a quick shout out to Jane Alana's mum. I know she's watching from home. Very proud. First time she's ever watched us. So hello Jane. And how's Alana going? Uh, great. Amazing. So Alana's just fresh fresh to the game, brand new out of uh, netball, netball background. So you can see about the height um, on yep. her as well. And she's been rolling through the ruck. Um, and she did that in the IC with us as well um, in the GB. And a um, little bit intimidating, obviously, some girls around that have played for much longer yeah. and had a lot more experience. But if you watch her today, and I've been watching all day, her her hands below below her, uh, down on her feet and below her waist, are just, are just immensely. And um, the knowledge of the game is growing. There she is again, not afraid to get, get them going. Starting to, to uh, um, and the more and more she's going to go. And so that's Rachel McGee. That was just button square. Picking up, pick up another corner. That's it. Godfrey Mids is in a, your tall flat market down to ground and hopefully your mids are streaming through to, to get on the end of it and snap it just like that. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that sort of makes it a little bit more interesting there, Lauren. Like, I think uh, we're down, we're now 12 points of difference, uh, a good 10 minutes to go and that was the important goal that uh, that the Irish needed. Yeah, and England Fresh can't afford this uh, next play out of here for a goal. Strong Good attack on the ball yeah. there by Lisa Wilson. And it's three versus one here for the English and they, they get it out. And that's Bit Lisa of a foot again. race out here onto the wing. We've got a free, free girl in the middle this here. This is this 18. space that they need. That's, that's Marie Keating. If she picks this up cleanly, but the English have got across to cover really well there and, and just get the a hold in the ball. And that's just getting numbers to the contest. Two on one. And that's it. And that's, again, what they, they need to do. England need to make sure that they they are getting there and their number's up. Here's another two on one we're going to see here at Rania and over the back though, Rania's a good chance here. She's read that well. Oh, beautiful play there. There's Six. that rugby tackle Emma again. Kelly. Emma Kelly's really just bodied the ball there, and that's great. Yeah, Emma Kelly, experienced uh, campaigner through through the Irish team. She's been around for quite a few years as well, and, and down in Melbourne, and again here last year. Here's Briny again. 
And another goal. And there we go again. Right Islands, again. Island aren't happy there. They thought maybe possibly a push freaky. in the back. Yeah. Uh, back to Emma Kelly. She, uh, she's won five Euro Cups, Emma. Five Euro Cups, fantastic. That's yeah, well, Two when ICs. I said she's been away around for a while. Two oh, ICs, wow. five Euro Cups. She's the winner of a Gaelic football grand final. She's, uh, yeah, yeah she's, she's been a bit of a figurehead for the Irish football team um, and a lot of what I see around is is a lot driven by Emma Kelly. So, um, yeah, it's good to see her still running around and pushing this, and this island team. Again, Here we go. Off You're the ground. Kidding. Laura's getting a bit excited here, showing her she true colours. She is steaming home. She really is. That's four goals now in a grand she final. She has just opened this game right up. Um, <laughs> and the English band has started. Here we go. We've got some... We've got some the Irish fans aren't biting, are they? I think the Irish fans are actually Dutch fans. <laughs> turned Irish fans. It's the beauty of uh, the beauty of this time of day at a Euro Cup. Uh, as the teams start to finish, they all filter into the stands and start to mingle, and you see, you see the colours mixing. That's it. And this is what the Euro Cup's all about, isn't it? Is it these group of people playing this sport that they've never really seen in, in real life? Or um, yeah, so it's it's amazing to see. Uh, so many, yeah, different nationalities. I love just going into the team chat and hearing a French um, accent and talking. Oh, I'm getting mine's, <laughs> mine's always, mine's always hearing, uh, hearing ball. Like when someone gets tackled and six different languages just yeah, know, yeah. scream out at the same time. I'm oh, too excited here and need more talk in their backline. Bit more communication They're from, uh, all over that, from yeah. Emma Kelly. So we talk about her experience, and that's where sometimes not going for the mark, but uh, calling in your teammate is the right thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. But up at the sort of half forward for uh, for the English, and if they get this out quickly, I just put my money on Bryony. But the yeah, Irish are running from half back. This is their chance here. It's beaten everyone. Beth Bailey tracks it back on the last line of defence. Throws on the boot. Another nice. trademark of hers, clearing out. Free kick to Alex Salter there. Just grabbed her shirt as she ran past there. Just, just uh, smart Alex, him. getting the body in the way. So Laura's free out on the on the flank here. If we can hit her up, no. She's stuck right in, in the middle. And Lisa Wilson cuts off. That just misses. Goes back and gets it. Gives it out to Salter, but a throw. So good pressure from the Irish there oh, and, and, uh, and a bit of talk back. And that gives Rachel happy. McGee uh, 25 metres and a shot on goal. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, uh, Lisa is an umpire in her, in her spare time, so I think she thought she might have been umpiring the, the game there and uh, unfortunately gave away a, a penalty there. And a great kick. Well done, Rachel McGee. So that's Rachel's second goal this, uh, this half. Yeah, fantastic really, goal there. Really trying to bring the uh, the Banshees back into the game. Yeah, we see her starting out off a uh, half forward or a high forward, and mostly I think she's coming off a wing, and I, you probably need her pace and um, and speed coming off off that half forward line there. I reckon they'd want to get one pretty quickly here, the Irish, to. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think time with this short format. Uh, yeah, the quick halves. I think this this short format is. There's only, there's only six minutes to go, so there's still time. There's still time for three goals. Yeah, right. But, uh, you know, it's a small ground too. It is. It is. But if we, uh, yeah, if if we see England keep going into uh, into the forward line like this, then here's yeah, Alex exactly. Peel on the end of this. Alex has just picked that up. Not off the knee there. Alex herself has come into her own this this tournament as well. So what's her background? Um, again, just just new to the game. Um, did briefly meet her last year down at Wimbledon Hawks. Came down for a quick run around, and uh, and as I left, she she joined formally and as uh, was part of the GB Swans uh, outfit as well. So came out to Melbourne and um, yeah. So she's had full season of the Wimbledon Hawks last year and. And again, another full tournament. So she's just still learning the game again and, and coming to her own her pace. Um, we we used her as a, a bit of a tagging role through the Swans, um, just to, to run with with any play we needed. And she was super defensive in that in that. Moment.
mindset. So very fit then. Super fit, Tough. personal trainer. Um, yeah, yep. so she uh, she doesn't mind to flex the old muscles here, here and in. Yeah. She's gonna kill me for saying that. Show the guns. Yeah, the gun show. She she does love it, but why oh, not? You've worked hard for oh, here's it. The there's a great. Tackle as well there's Hughes, yeah. Alex Peel, as we well, say. There's that she, pace. She's putting those guns to good use. <laughs> there they are. Although she's not taking the free kick. Someone out. Yeah, someone who's. Uh, Alex, that was yours, hon. <laughs> someone's a better shot at goals. So we give them. Uh, it looks like one of the soldier sisters. Yes, this is Danny lining up again. Another amazing set shot at goal normally, and I'm probably going to talk her up and she's going to miss it. But, oh, it hasn't come off she's the boot too well. And it's gone straight and it's through. Worked. There we go. Well done. Great goal. Yeah, that's and really, again, team that's really the sealer, so well done. It's, and that's the stuff um, we talk about in football, those one percenters to chase down tackle and, and turn a ball over there in your, in your forward 50 is is what we, we rate. The goal, obviously, a finished result, but it's that chase down tackle that, that the coaches will be loving down in England, uh, at the English camp down there. That's it. The Irish aren't giving up here. Uh, and they never Marie will. Keating. We've said that repeatedly. Marie Keating, beautiful clearance there and a great mark. So there you go again. Rachel I really McGee. rate Rachel McGee's second mm -hmm. half. I think she's, uh, she's put her hand up and done everything she could do. England have the numbers back here. That's a big kick. Jeez, that is a Oh. Beth Bailey, last line of defence, which she's yeah. done so Beth, the, quite uh, often. Beth uh, probably feels at home in the uh, defensive goal square. She looks it. Yeah, yeah. So again, um, she's got number four on here. Very uh, at Salter, yeah. Alex and take yeah, it. She's on got here, her space. It can run up. Great kick up to the wing, and they've got the space over the back. Two on. The, only the boundary line will beat them here. Oh, great tackle. That's a, that's a huge that's tackle a by tackle. Nora. That looks like a Nora, it is. Yeah, Nora really, really just got to that contest and went straight in. That and again, was a you see Nora's game coming. Um, leaps and bounds again. Full a few seasons. Now Diamonds. She's, she's with the Diamonds. She's, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you, you, those seasons, clubs uh, want to... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ball drills and just that sort of learn and coming up to standard of training, and it really helps yeah, a lot of these girls and to get, get to know the game. And at this standard, strong mark. And at this this level as well, the, the guys the guys don't mind half a training or a, a Tuesday. We used to run it a Tuesday together, a Thursday separate. Yep. Warm up together and do your lanes and run throughs. It just builds that that club environment. That makes it more of a team as well, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Is there any, any crossover at the Bulldogs right now? Um, no, unfortunately, um, as they are professional athletes and we're still yeah. technically semi-professional, um, we're still working during the day. So I'll go and teach the kids during the day and of course. Uh, head into to training at night and we kind of maybe pass each other in the car park at Whit Noble. But, um, We've, we, we've met the boys and we, we spend most of our sh social functions with them and uh, we got to, we, we had a training um, as a group through the summer, um, worked on some individual I guess, goals with them, um, but they've been, they've been super supportive. The whole club and the whole, I, I feel like it would be for the other seven teams as well, but the whole club itself has just been amazingly supportive of us uh, coming in and, and obviously it's an environment where women haven't been around and not this many women yeah, either there's yep. obviously w women in i guess support staff or in on the uh yeah in the offices and whatnot but to, to actually have the women in through the training facilities in the gym yep. and bevo's been pretty uh he, he's really backed it hasn't he yeah absolutely um he's he's been amazing as well and he sat in on a few of our our team meetings as well and often pops his head and there we go, there we go. great England work amazing scenes for england really really great and well done, well done to England. There they, they are. Deserve they, this, are they deserve this wrapped. victory. Absolutely right with that. Um, it's That's you a year see that work. excitement, and I think the devastation of last year. And um, you see Chloe Hall out there with the trainers top on, assistant coach today. Unfortunately, went down with an ACL this time last year, and um, just jumping around with joy there, and uh, absolutely stoked for them. Uh, yeah, I, I think Ireland have, have always set the, the benchmark, and again. Won the IC, won this last year, so. And that's it, and, and you know, the, the battles just continue between these two great teams, and uh, 
this goes down as another another amazing sort of amazing match. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think England played out of out of their, their school day. I've seen most of their matches today. Heap of fans here for them. Um, yes, yeah, so it's amazing, amazing to see uh, them get across the line. It is. Time around. And to see this water, the uh, the English Irish guys do get on the ground. Yeah, that's it. So England Ireland final in the women's and, and England Ireland final in the in the men's. So absolutely stoked for for the girls. And so who would now, here we go. We see uh, Laura Turner, Roman Ann Turner, getting lifted up. Is this, it's is actually this... her final final tournament and match. She's right, um, she she's into retirement as of this. She deserves every bit of support uh, Oh, and she's been an amazing captain, an amazing player, um, a figurehead for, for women's football here through through England and GB. And, and so the whole of Europe, in fact. Absolutely. She's, uh, she's done amazing So great to see her um, and get this win on her final international game. She, uh, uh, congr yeah. Seriously, congratulations to all of them. That's, that's amazing. So we're just going to, we're going to stop... We're going to stop for the uh, for the national anthems now, and then join you again uh, for the men's final. And here we go, back, uh, back Ollie Howard and Andrew Hughes for the, uh, for the men's final. Yeah, really looking forward to this one. Um, both sides uh, undefeated throughout the day, and uh, it all comes down to this. And there's uh, a fair bit of passion in the, uh, the national anthems there, so if they take that into the... Into the yeah, both uh, just come off the back of watching uh, their female counterparts compete in the match just before them with, uh, with the England Vixens taking out the, taking out the victory. And, um, yeah, let's see if the, the English uh, men, the Dragon Slayers, can repeat. repeat that. All, all the avenge. So there's some, uh, some well-known, uh, you know, international football names floating around uh, in this game and, and you know a few that few that we're really looking forward to uh, number one for the English Dragon Slayers Luke Booth was, has been really good all day and uh, certainly knows how to find the footy the other one that I really like for the uh, England Dragon Slayers is Andrew Walkton who um, yeah. was outstanding in the semi-final um, really expecting him to have a big big grand final as well Gavin Murray, number 11 for the uh, Warriors. He had a great game in last year's uh, Euro Cup final. He was captaining the team this, this year and certainly going to give it his all. Big Alan Tobin. Uh, who else is... 
There's a few of the few of the boys here from uh, the Manchester Mosquitoes, the South Lump, Dublin Swans, Belfast Redbacks. The boys they're coming from all over, and they're uh, they're lining up now, um, just about ready for a start. The umpire holds the ball aloft, and we're we're off. And here it is. And Alan Tobin just punches that out of the ruck, gets it down forward, and Matthew Whiteley sees it sees it out over the boundary line. So what's going to win this game, Husey? What's uh... oh, after a long after a long day? I think it's a side that uh, will be able to run the game out in that uh, second half. But you've got to use your your poise and um, your structures to set up well behind the footy and uh, create your play from there. A bit of uh, good good play there. So, so England, England out riding and uh, beautiful pass down forward to number 23, Martin Kearney, who just slips over the ball. And he's walked in. Yeah, walked in. So he's been he's been pretty tricky today. So I'd be the Irish would want to wear him pretty closely and a great good shepherd. shepherd and breaks a tackle, clearing kick. That might be the way to beat Walkton today. Two on one and uh, get the numbers back. And it's over the back here at the Irish and just misses being a first score. So boundary throw in right next to the Irish goals. So, so England really pushing numbers uh, deep into their fence here to win the stoppage. They've got to make sure that their forwards probably push up a little bit. Um, that's right. So Tobin's they've got a clear kick. Here. Tobin's sitting by himself in the middle of the ground, and if there's a quick kick out... No, they've managed to run the ball out. They've done well here. Yep. Break the lines, get over the, there, and it's a beautiful pass. Great beautiful kick. pass down to number four. Not sure who number four is, but that was a great kick, and he's great just sent it beautifully. That one's... Uh, I think that's Mick K there. We're going to go with that anyway. Yeah, we'll run with that. And, and that's, um, I mean, a dangerous kick into the middle, but when it comes off like that, that's uh, very valuable. Got to make the most of this, and he's got it straight through. It. First goal in the grand final, so good start for good start for uh, for the English. Uh, big fella number six there, running back into the middle, and uh, pretty happy with himself. And that's uh, that's what you want when you're uh, the nerves early in the final. You get that set shot from uh, 15 out directly in front. That's uh, that's certainly what you want when you're uh, when you're trying to get the convert early on in the game. Let's see if Tobin can get another big punch out, get it forward for the team here. Good tap and nice, uh, nice clearance there by Sean McClinchy. And great tackle, strong tackle. Really strong so contested footy. That was Overton here. there and uh, the English are really sort of bringing it in this early, uh, early stage of the game. Tobin's coming off with an ankle, it looks. Oh, That's going to uh, that could be telling. Gonna hurt the rotation. Hopefully can get him back on. Losing a big fella early. Great handball Here's there. Here's Overton. Long and deep. Can it be touched on the line? It is. Great. Good defence. Really strong defence there for, uh, from Morris Bartley. So the, uh, the Dragon Slayer certainly started the better here in this final. That's a great, great Beautiful kick. pass. Beautiful pass. That's Gavin Murray, the captain, I believe. Yep, so Gav's, Gav's been around for a while and uh, can certainly play. And showed it there, just leading up, yeah. strong mark in front. Although here's, here's your boy, Walkton. Yeah, look, uh, I was on him early before, from the start of the game. He's confident too, he's going back. He's not even looking for uh, those forward leading he's, options. He's behind halfway at the Jeez. stage. So let's see, let's see what he can do. But uh, that's a nice kick, actually. He's got actually. a great got roost distance. on him, but offline. Maybe try to kick that a little too far there. Uh, they want to be a bit closer on Walkton. I reckon you're right that he's he's the danger man at this uh, at this early stage. So big fella Paul Murphy out from full back. Nice kick, Paul. That's a, a beautiful great kick. kick. Goes to the captain again, and that's yeah. Strong grab, strong grab. Great and kick. Nice kick down to full oh, what a great spoil there to make that lunging effort. And coming down, oh. so Gareth Baird tackled over the line, Betty, and he gets up a bit angry, but he's all right. That was a that was a great tackle there by uh, number 15 for the uh, Miles Hudson for the great for the repeat efforts players. there. He got the spoil in early and then got the uh, tackle to create another stoppage. Well he's done. Sitting there. at the back, you should get this ball and tackles again. Bring his rug, 
rugby background, enjoying tackling Here he goes. and uh, kicking. Clears the ball forward. Smart play by Walkton to tap that over the top. But Murray's in there as usual. Oh, this is a big one-on-one -on -one contest inside the 50. Oh, strong body position. Keep your feet. That was great play by the Irish fullback there. Yeah, really. He was one on two, one on three there, and he um, stood tall half the yeah. contest, waited for his uh, support to come. I really like England's uh, England structure. They're handling backwards to a man in space and sort of quarterbacking it. And I think yeah. it's. Uh, and their forward line setup looks really strong as well. And He's here been he is. influential early, Gavin Murray. Jeez, he might himself into trouble, but gets out. Oh, don't. Oh, tackled as he kicked it, pushed the ball, forced him uh, offline with the yeah, kick. That was, uh, McCloskey. And less than the better. He's, uh, he's done well. So, I put the uh, one to eight. Well, Hudson he, um, certainly doesn't uh, too much pass. Uh, it's more ground here, but that, that could be out. No. Good contact to Bartley. Bieber, probably for style, but uh, he did well. Oh, then, uh, you know, strong contest, bounce forward again, and it seems to up in the uh, uh, in the Irish half. Yeah. Face the Irish here, kind of stepping out, and it's Run. top, and now he's right. at the top. I play not to play. There we go. Anyone who's not a cheap ran around and racking it up in the set. In, in the third half. Uh, Murray's head about to marks already. Everywhere. It's Booth. Kicks it forward. And they've taken oh. a mark. And That's plays on immediately. In. Walked in. He's kicked it. Well, he's he kicked it. He's put it over the fence nearly. <laughs> Huge goal from Walkton. Geez, they've started this game beautifully. Oh, that's it. Maybe riding the wave of uh, emotion from seeing their girls win just moments ago. <laughs> the atmosphere builds up. The uh, relations between Ireland and uh, the Netherlands seem to have improved after <laughs> a few drinks, but um, I think they just want to see a contest here in this yeah. grand final. <laughs> and here comes again the Bieber. Yeah. Good clearance by the Beeb. Really but great Uber. defense. Miles, Miles again. And he's got the free man out here. He's been and outstanding early, Miles. So Walkton comes in again and a nice big kick to the hot spot. And this gives uh, every chance to the two English blokes oh, Great there. spoil. Great spoil. And he follows up here. So that's Paul Murphy. Forward. Friar Stone. Murphy. He's managed to force that ball forward without a disposal. Yeah. Probably a good 50, 60 metres. That is the perfect defender, really. <laughs> Absolutely. You don't, get a, you don't get a possession for that, but um, it's invaluable. So let's see. There's a few, few sort of Irish boys here who, who need to stand up in this, uh, in this and, and get this, the, the first goal on the board and really bring the, bring the team back into the game. You know, a couple of guys, you know, Marcus... So Paul Murphy really trying his heart out to push them forward at every uh, contest. He's up in the ruck with uh, with Tobin off the ground. But, um, yeah, they seem to be missing uh, Big Tobin um, in the early part of this game. That's a big blow for them. Yeah. And the Beebs, the Beebs just struggling to contain uh, Kane Walker there. Yeah, walked in. Jesus. Oh, walked in. Uh, sorry. Yes. He's been uh, he's been good early. And he backs himself from a distance, so we yeah. see him go right back again. He does have a big leg on him, though, so this shouldn't be a, shouldn't be a drama. Drop wasn't bit perfect, right, but uh, right yeah. About it. There we go. So great, great play. 
Hawks is really taking the game up to the Irish here. So that's uh, three goals, two to um, one point at this stage. And uh, they'll certainly want to get uh, one before half time here, the Irish, uh, the Irish Warriors. Throw around the changes to the Irish. You can see the. Ah, but great takeaway there. But I, think that's, I think that's Mick Cave, number, number six. Anyway, we're running with him. So he's done. That's his he's second kicked, goal. He's so kicked a couple. He's kicked two. Walkton's kicked two. Yep. So the two of them are doing the damage, aren't they? They having real influence early on in this match. And um, geez, they they need to settle here. The uh, the Warriors. They really want to get the next one. I think that partly comes down to structures there around the uh, stop around the bounce. Yeah. So we see the. Uh, the Irish sort of setting up, and it's a smaller, it's a smaller setup nine aside. You've only got two in the middle, so hard to have a sort of sweeper in the uh, in the square without losing too much. But yeah, if you lose the stoppages like that, you can see what happened there. Just straight down goal. Um, you just really need to be strong in and around the contest there. And out here again, walked and walked in with the ball. Uh, he's picked that up at pace. But pushing the ball forward. Um, uh, so it's a real test, real test of the Irish guys' character here, and, and we know they'll fight back. We know that they will, uh, they'll keep pushing. But uh, it's going to be an interesting few minutes before the half. Yep. Oh, oh and a There's free of, kick there. Yep. Bit high. Bit high. So the, this could really put a nail in the coffin. Going in five goals up at half time would be a, a, a huge lead in this sort of game. Yeah, it's deflating as well. With every every further goal that gets kicked, it just uh, makes the job even harder. And the Irish, the Irish haven't had an easy run. So the Irish had to beat the uh, the Croatians last year's Euro Cup winners in the uh, quarterfinals this year. So it's been a long long day for them, and it might be showing at this stage. Yeah, and there's a siren for half time. Uh, so it's uh, it's the Dragon Slayers, England up uh, 32 to Ar the Irish Warriors, uh, one behind. Kieran O'Hara out on the ground. The coach is uh, who else is uh, Brian Kieran coaching them. Kieran's uh, Kieran's assistant coaching, and they've come in and really uh, really sort of getting the boys fired up. The England the English team's in nice and close here, and looking like a very very good unit. Yeah, the point you, you talked about the uh, the road to the final and um, yeah, talking to the Irish players uh, before this match, they said they had a really tough semi-final as well um, against the Germans, I think it was. Um, so perhaps that's starting to show early on in this match. But as you said, they'll uh, they show they'll show plenty of character. You can see uh, see them really coming out strong in this second half to make a game of this. A couple of injured blokes too for the Irish. I think they've had a uh, a pretty tough afternoon. Uh, Take nothing away. Take nothing away from no, uh, the English. The English. They were um, outstanding in that first half. They won the won the clearances convincingly. Got the ball inside 50 quickly to Walkton uh, and we're, Mick K. I think it is Mick K. He's number, number six, six anyway. Yeah. He's kicked. Uh, he's kicked a couple of goals. So two to Walkton, two to Mick K. Um, and that's really helped set them up uh, to maybe take away this uh, away the title. Absolutely, and I think you know. It, those guys are finishing it, and they've been they've been you know great players today. But all, it's probably coming from half back, and that and that uh, there we go. Coming from half back and having having an outrider at every contest. Yeah. And uh, certainly the uh, the atmosphere is building here as we get uh, get towards the end of what it's been a cracking day here in Bordeaux. As the sun sets, beautiful, beautiful sort of colour over the uh, over the crowd here. There's Certainly, some strong support coming from the crowd for Ireland. Uh, I think everyone wants to see them make a game of this in the second half. So we'll see how they go early on. Well, here they go. Declan Morgan getting a bit, getting a bit sort of uh, physical in the middle, and let's hope he goes straight into this contest. Big one, big one out of the middle here. And again, the English just had it, seemed to be in the right spots, but the Irish have got the run, and that's it, using using their mates. 
Oh. And a huge shepherd by Beaver. Beaver. That Owen, could be the Dad, spark they Owen needed. Owen Gomercho. But Big Miles, Big Miles just standing tall in defence. He's done it all day. Yeah, he has. He's been brilliant. He's been a rock back there. And again, there again. Long clearing kick. Long Should kick. mark here by the... Oh, no. Uh, probably probably needs to be called in by his uh, teammate yeah. a little bit there just to get a bit of confidence. Seemed like he was a little bit unsure. Oh, Has that gone through? That's taken... That's Bounce on the line. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> They tried everything to miss that, and it finally went through. And uh, that's number four for England. We actually don't have number four on the team list here, but um, that one really hurts, really hurts the Warriors. And the beauty of the Aussie rules ball we saw there, landed on the goal line and bounced backwards. And probably a little bit unusually, I think it might have also hit the crossbar, which you probably don't see <laughs> too often. <laughs> what's, what's the ruling on the crossbar? <laughs> so the... The English here, I'd have oh. uh, number six is nearly best on at this stage, and he just seems to have a bit he's of. He's kicked a couple so of goals. He's been outstanding out of the middle. ESP with the uh, with the ruckman and seems to find the yeah. ball out of the middle every time, and a free kick holding uh, the man. For Walkton. So Walkton didn't like hearing that there may be another best on, and thought he'll he'll yeah, get another kick and uh, try and snag his third. He's had a big year, Walkton. He's. Uh, I think he was leading goal kicker at IC uh, 17, named in the world team uh, following that competition, and uh, he lines up here for his third goal. And he knows He's how to slot him. There we go. So that takes the English to, uh, what is it, 7 uh, seven two forty four to 1 behind. I don't think we saw this coming. Uh, you know, I was really coming into this final expecting it to be a really close contest, but after... After five games throughout the day, uh, what can happen is you, you just don't know what state the or what shape the, the sides in once they get there, how fit their lineup is, and um, looks to me like the Irish boys have, um, you know, starting to tire as the game's gone on, and uh, the the Dragon Slayers are just going from strength to strength. All right, so they've got their big uh, big captain Paul. Uh, Big Captain Murphy back in the ruck. And he's punched the ball forward there. Big Gavin. He's, yep, he's trying to stamp, stamp his authority on the game. Great tackle there by Dave McGintney. He's from a city called Bully Cray. Don't know where that is, but... Uh... Oh, oh, strong mark. Great mark. That's uh, Lewis Azain. He's big, he's round, he bounces off the ground. <laughs> He just threw, uh, he threw the big uh, Kieran Caffrey out of the way. Interesting fact about Kieran, he, uh, he works as a farmer that claims he's from Dublin. So, don't many, know. Many, many farms in Dublin? Yeah, a bit confused, old Kieran. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, Lewis Zane has uh, pushed that one just across the face of goal. So, Kieran to kick out here. Beautiful kick. Good distance. He's, he's taken a few marks. And uh, Gab the Murphy takes that, but he's got nothing up the ground. There's no movement for the uh, for the Irish team. He's just going to kick it in, and the English and defense here. English defense get there again and have the numbers. Oh. Good that's tackle. Great tackle. That's a great tackle. That's a bit of a. That's Dave McGinty again. Pumped. He's pumped. I'm not sure. The ball. The boy from Bully Cray just keeps uh, keeps the tackling going. And geez, if uh, if there's any chance, <laughs> he absolutely needs to slot this. Great goal, great goal. Well done. Can that be the spark? Uh, it's probably a big effort to kick seven goals in the remaining uh, ten minutes of this game, but yeah, I think it, it might be a bit tough for me. <laughs> to think how different it could have been if Michael Finn hadn't have missed his connecting flight. <laughs> oh, that is. That hurts, really hurts. We need a bit of experience from uh, number 10, the, the Silver Fox out there. There he is, he's getting close, but he just uh, just missed it. And again, Gav. Jesus. I'll tell you what, he doesn't just mind dancing, trying to dance yeah. around a couple either. What a long kick, it's just off. You can't fault him today though, that's... Uh, no, he's taking you know. the game on, he's, uh, he's, he's just trying everything at this stage. Yeah. Where's Kevin McSorley? Seems to be up and about, you know, away from the baby for a night. He should uh, running around out there. 
over the top here, though, and uh, the English could break away here if they get away. That's beautiful play. Getting the arms that's, up and tackle. That's Ashley shows... Swift. Uh, he's, he's as elusive as, as his hairline. Absolutely beautiful play. Uh, and here he comes again. Walked in. Walked in again. He's making an absolute claim for best on ground in this grand final. Trying to keep up with Bryony from, uh, from the English girls team, the English women's team, uh, who tore apart the, uh, the final, kicking four or five goals. And I think that's four for him, and he's kicked that one out of the ground. No one seems to be in any real rush to get a get a replacement for you. <laughs> Party time now for the Dragon Slayers. They can taste success here. And uh, following on the back of the, the, the girls winning, uh, they'll certainly be in for a great night tonight. Yeah, it's going to be a big, uh, big evening for the, uh, the English teams. And they've got a lot of friends in the Welsh and the Scottish through the, the GB connection uh, for Euro, uh, for International Cup as well, which is nice for the connections. Here they come again. And the big fellas out for full forward. Should hand all this off. A good tackle there. Great tackle by Paul Murphy. The umpire's called that uh, ball up. Maybe it was out of bounds. I'm not sure. No, he's called it a ball up. Somewhere, somewhere between holding the ball and holding the man, so we'll just yeah, pull it up. <laughs> And here Great he is, though. Down. Murphy gets the hammer. That's smart play there. Getting a bit of run, getting him and short kick hit up. Uh, Tobin's back on. Tobin, he's gone forward. It's a bit of a mongrel punt. A bit of a chaos ball coming in, and uh, the English defence miles again. Great kick. Jeez, my boy, he's had it on. Come in the middle here. Shooting. Look at that. Great Switch slipper. Into the middle. And they'll skills? finish here. This could be the nail. A little bit of icing. No, no. just missed. He's got great skills, Warpton, doesn't he? To turn, you know, good vision firstly, but to hit up that, that kick into the middle there. Yeah, smart play, wasn't it? To, uh, to, to realise that there was space out on that far side, switch the ball across, create uh, the option for a teammate to run in and have a shot on goal. So four minutes to go in the, uh, in the men's final here. And the task is probably beyond Ireland now, but um, they, can still, they can still give it a shake, a couple of goals, and, and walk away with their heads held high. To get to the final has been a big effort. I think you can probably start the car if you're, a, if you're an Ireland fan. Um, doesn't look like they're going to be able to come back from here, I wouldn't have thought. Nice kick to the fat side, and the Silver Fox knows how to find the ball. Good mark. Really good mark. And the umpire's pulling the, uh, the English fella back on the mark there, so... Probably within, probably within range here, and he thinks he is. He's, he's gone back. Yeah, I'll back him from there. So Owen goes back. All those. Let's hit the post. Hit the upright. Not the crossbar. <laughs> <laughs> Great spread there by Walkden again. And now seems... they're just running down the clock here. Back in board to Miles. He's been outstanding, Miles. Yeah, I think really for a defender's game, you can't, you know, you can't get much better than, than what he's done. He's repelled no. every single Irish attack. The Irish have got the numbers here, and they should come off half back. Out of bounds, I think. Yep. yep on the far side, under the scoreboard, and uh, the umpire will throw it back up. Good tap. Nice takeaway by the Irish, and here's a good chance for a goal. Once again, again. Miles Hudson. Outstanding. Just, he's just been the rocket Gibraltar. It's not very sexy to name a name a defender as your as your as best your on ground, but he's been outstanding. Especially when a couple of uh, Fords kicked four and uh, four and a, four in uh, in half an hour of footy is uh, pretty not bad going. pretty impressive. And chopping up across half back, setting up into the yeah. middle too. So, yeah. oh. great, great shepherd. shepherd. I think I think I've been really impressed all day with the shepherding. So there's something yeah. there's something going well in uh, in the coaching across Europe to see to see that much sort of support for teammates. Absolutely, yeah. For for players that uh, they don't play a 
a heap of footy perhaps, but um, yeah, they certainly understand the, the importance and certainly the coaching seems to be stressing the value of the uh, of protecting your teammates. Staying involved in the game. The tackling, I mean, the tackling in, in the European game has always been a, uh, uh, you know, at the forefront, yeah. given, given the backgrounds of a lot of the players. Yeah. But uh, yeah, now they're starting to be involved without the ball, uh, shepherding their mates, and, and the skills are just getting better and better. I mean, there we go. We just see beautiful long goal. That, walked uh, in again. That walked in again. Wow, we may have just put the medal on his neck. Free kick given uh, off the square here uh, to the English. And they'll go for it again. They've probably got time for one or two more uh, chances here. So this might be one of the last plays of the game. See uh, big fellas leading out wide. That's Martin. Big Marty's just gone down. But uh, up again and a good chance. And here, here go the English, uh, English structures. A great tackle. That's a free kick there. Free kick to number nine. That's uh, Rob Goliath. Known, known to tackle a sweet or two over his time. It's on here, though. Uh, no need for this. No need for this. Good game by all the boys. And, that's uh, a siren. That's a final siren. And great game, great game of footy. Well done to the English on a, on a really, really strong win in both the men's and women's uh, Euro Cup 2017. Absolutely, the Dragon Slayers uh, 58 to the Warriors nine. Terrific win. And I'm going to leave you there as we go down to do the uh, presentation. But what a what a great day of footy! And Hughesy, thanks for joining me. Uh, no worries, thanks, Ollie. It's been brilliant. Thank you. It's not on, he won't have it on yet. No, no you're up.
attention just briefly if I can. Understand everyone's had a really big day, it's been a really long day, um, but if you can please just pay your attention just for five or ten minutes here, we'll do our best to get through these speeches. Okay, just, just quickly, for those of you who don't know, my name's Ryan Davies. it's an absolute pleasure to be here to represent AFL Europe today, uh, along with a number of others who have, who have had a massive input in, in pulling today together. So, as you most of you will surely know, today was uh, the 12th Euro Cup, um, and obviously the second time that we've been able to host it here in Bordeaux, which has been absolutely fantastic and, and an absolutely beautiful day. So, can you please throw your hands together just quickly for, uh, for everyone involved here. It has been a, a massive day of football. There's a, looks a few weary bodies around, and that's, that's rightly so. We've had 53 matches played across four pitches. We've had 21 teams here representing 15 countries in both men's and women's divisions, um, which is an incredible effort. Obviously, that doesn't happen by chance. Uh, I'd like a, a massive call out to the umpiring group here. We had 11 umpires here, if we can throw our hands together from them. Much like, much like our, our diverse group here in, on, on the playing field, our umpiring, uh, our, our umpiring group came from 11 different countries um, and obviously I'd like to call out Laurie as well who's travelled all the way from the USA. Um, I'm starting to think Europe is her home venue so we're very pleased to have you back here again, thank you. To the match officials that did an incredible job, um, who, who were the timekeepers, who were the scorers, who were the runners. Uh, you guys did an absolutely amazing job. You made a, a seamless event. Um, you play a huge, huge part in it. So for those who gave up their time, travelled here at their own expense um, for a lunch pack and a, and a really, really good night, um, I'd just like to thank you guys because uh, I know you're all out there hopefully having a beer by now, but thank you. And especially to, and sorry, the list does run a little long, but I'll try and get through this as quick as I can. Um, to the 60 plus members of the CNFA, and in particular the Bordeaux Bombers who were here today. They were here at 6 a.m. setting up the fields for you, setting up the fields so that they look exactly like they did today. They've been selling beers, wine, making food all day, making sure everything ran, ran like work. Uh, and they'll still be here and make sure you figure out all those. And also, I'd just like to call out to Bar TV who are up there who have been live streaming today um, and have done a massive effort making sure that we can try and spread this game to as many people as possible. There's a lot of people watching all over the world and um, it's fantastic to, to showcase AFL here in Europe and, and it's been an amazing effort. So thanks very much to those guys. There are, um, there are a longer list of sponsors, but I'm going to throw over to, to Thomas um, who's going to run through those. But I would just like to, to close out my part initially by um, obviously thanking, as I've mentioned, the Bordeaux Bombers, the CNFA for being an in incredible support and helping us host this event, to Leo Larange for their ongoing support, um, not only to this event, but obviously to the AFL uh, throughout Europe is incredible, and obviously to the City Council for their support in, in providing this magnificent venue and so much more. So I'd like to throw over to Thomas, um, who's going to say a few words as well before we get into the presentations. Thank you. Hello, Uh, my name is Thomas and I have a lot of here and I have a lot of the public and the human ladies. I'm here. All of you here have been doing it all the And uh, all of you from my school now, you know, I can't see a
Jericho headed up as coach and Katrina stopping at the um, the day. Now moving there's no support be support certainly the support support um, and to experience is in Europe way to experience
Come forward, guys. Come forward. Oh. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, I've got a few words to say. It's 19, 21 names, so let's get it done so we can have a beer because I'm thirsty. Uh, these guys celebrate quickly.
Nicholas Anderson.